What is up YouTube? That's it here today. I'm bringing you guys part two in the little series I'm doing where I show you guys the best returning Pokemon you can be using to prepare for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet coming out a little bit later this month. This is all Pokemon that have already been confirmed by the Pokemon company in official trailers on the website. There's no spoilers. We're not going into anything crazy here. We're just going to be talking about the Pokemon that are already confirmed to be in the decks and breaking them down by uh you know the their play styles in previous gens i've been playing competitive pokemon going all the way back to the early 2000s i've been playing vgc since 2011 and so i've seen how these pokemon get played at the start of every single new format yesterday we went over all of the pokemon in the kanto and johto decks so that's uh you know all the pokemon listed right here and uh, today what we're going to be doing is going over all of the Pokemon from Gens 3 through 5. So that's going to be things like Breloom, Hariyama, Sableye, uh, Altaria, Saviper, Zangu, Salamence, Luxray, all these good Pokemon. We're going to show you guys how they get used in both singles and in doubles. And before we get into the game, I want to say if you guys have any ideas for content you guys want to see me make before Scarlet and Violet that can help you be the best player that you want to be, let me know in the comments. I'm going to do my very best to make that sort of stuff. I will also say that it'd be really cool if we can get this video to 100 likes. That would make me really, really happy. I don't get that that often anymore. So if you want to help this video get to 100 likes and you actually learned something from this video, leave a like, leave a comment, drop a sub, show some support. And without further ado, we're going to get right on into this. This is a stream highlight I stream every single weekday at Twitch TV slash that's plus one, where we did all this live. So you're not only going to see me talking about every one of these Pokemon, going over all of their base stats and talking about their best abilities, common items, common moveset choices. You're going to see all of that while I'm answering questions and talking with chat at the same time. So if that's something you like, hopefully you like this video and uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Here we go. Let's get into this. Um, let's start things off with Pelipper. Pelipper is probably going to be super, super de duper meta. Pelipper is big busted. In every single format where like rain is an option, you can see it gets the Drizzle ability, activates rain. This Pokemon is currently banned, I think. Dr Drizzle's banned in BSPOU. Um, but Pelipper is busted in like every single BDC format, 2017, 2018. Um, you know, it's very, very, it's been very, very good in non-restrictive EDC formats in Sword and Shield. Very, very good bond. I think this is personally my favorite weather setter. I like Pelipper more than Kyogre a lot of the time, just because the ability to not take uh, super effective damage from grass attacks is really nice. Also being able to hit things with big 100% accuracy hurricanes in the rain is very good. 65 is fast enough to function inside of Tailwind. 95 base special attack is good. Uh, a lot of the water mons usually have about that much special attack, so that's good. 100 base defense is great. It gets Tailwind. It gets Wide Guard. Uh, if rain is at all usable, this Pokemon will be everywhere. I think also the fact that it's a flying type makes it a great partner for a lot of those mons. They're going to have that big ground weakness because we were talking about how good electro types are going to be, um, which means... If you have a lot of electric attacks on your team, you might want to think about adding a Pelipper so you can pivot and switch in to block those ground attacks and then repin those ground Pokemon with your Pelipper. So it's going to be a very, 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 very good mon. Like, Pelipper is going to be everywhere. Um, I was talking yesterday about how, like, you can catch me bringing T-Tar to the first regional. It's either going to be T-Tar or Pelipper. Weather is premium at the start of a new format because, like I've been talking about, Everyone's going to be trying their best to use only new mons and all the new tech and all the new strategies and all the new abilities and the classics. Titar, Sandrush, Pelipper with Drizzle and uh, Swift Swim mons. Those are the things that's actually going to win. And it's not punishing people for learning how to play the game, but it's definitely prioritizing winning with what you know over winning with something new. And so you're going to expect to see a lot of Pelipper. I love power creep. I just hope they give them abilities that make older mons viable. I think a lot of the mons are, I think the only not viable mon in the deck so far is Hypno. <laughs> so it's one big bust. You know, rain teams are really good and Pelipper's good. You can always go Pelipper Golduck. It's in the decks. Definitely works. 2017 was literally built on the backbone of Pelipper Golduck. Um, so let's go Gardevoir here. So Gardevoir is going to uh, another be, be like another really, really good mod. Uh, Synchronize good ability, Trace good ability, Telepathy also a very good ability. We're going to see a lot of AoE moves in this deck. We're actually going to be getting to Toxtricity later. I haven't talked that much about Toxtricity, but Toxtricity is going to be a very, very, very good mod in this format. Gardevoir is a good partner for Toxtricity. Um, it resists Psychic Attacks, so you can switch in on that, but also being able to have Telepathy, you can have Toxtricity with like Boom Burst or other moves that are AoE that hit everything. It's a good mod. You can get Trick Room. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be able to keep like the ally switch from like a tr um but good speed stat can be scarfed 
great dual stab in Psychic Fairy. Like I said, it can trick room. It can do a bunch of really, really cool things. Gardevoir is one of those mons that gets a bunch of very, very unique support moves. Uh, things like Wish for Singles, Hypnosis, uh, Heal Pulse. It's probably going to be one of the better Heal Pulse mons in the format. Even Teleport is usable, usable in singles to be able to pivot correctly. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I think Gardevoir is really, really good. It gets a bunch of really cool egg moves too. Um, it gets things like... Uh, yeah, egg move ally switch. So if ally switch gets taken away as a TR, this might be one of the only ally switch users in the format, which could be a really, really good thing. Gets things like Encore, Destiny Bond, Knock Off. There's a bunch of very, very unique things that Gardevoir can do that not a lot of other Pokemon can. And so you can expect to see a lot of Gardevoir on teams that want like a secondary Trick Room setter. So like, let's say your main Trick Room setter is... Let's see, let's just pick a Pokemon in the format. Slowbro or something? You might want to have like a secondary guard just in case. Um... Just to throw that out there, like it might be a good idea. And also Guard and Slowbro might be able to go well together because like remember Gardevoir has that berry typing. So it's weak against things like Steel. Slowbro can switch in, alleviate some of that pressure and uh, they cover each other. Other than the Ghost and Dark Weakness, pretty well. Thoughts on fighting Terra Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn, I don't think is in the game yet. So I don't, and also we don't know if Body Press is going to be in the game either. So that's another thing. Like it wasn't in BDSP. So you, you, we actually, well, I mean it was, it was only on one Mon. It was on a Probo Pass. So we don't actually know. I hope they bring Rilla. He keeps Surge but loses Glide. I don't think they're going to bring Rilla. Um, I actually don't think that in, in Phase 1 they're going to be bringing... Yo, is that a sub? Dark Nebula OG, 15 months. Thank you so much for the support, my friend. Hopefully you're having a great day. Hopefully you're enjoying the list. Um, I actually don't think they're going to bring a lot of the auto train setter mons for Phase 1. So no Tapus, no um, Pincurchins, no Rillas. Because there's a huge power creep that comes when you add terrains. It's basically like adding a life orb to a lot of other mods, like electric terrain, grassy terrain, um, psychic terrain, misty terrain's more defensive, but th those three, it's like adding a life orb. So it's like everything has like a big damage multiplier, and it's that damage multiplier, even though it's a 1.3, that invalidates a lot of other mods from seeing play. And so if they want people to use a lot of different stuff, adding those terrains, even if you don't have the moves that necessarily work with them, like expanding force, rising voltage, grassy glide, it's still too much power creep um because like it just invalidates a lot of other mods because you have to run the terrain setter and then you run one mod that goes really really well with the terrain but thank you so much dark nebula og for dropping the sub first sub of the day can we put some subs up for this can we put some subs up i would like to see some subs up i would like to touch the subs up let's go appreciate you friend hopefully you're having a good day and uh let's go down the list so brelum brelum is a pokemon actually before we get into this i want you guys to look at like shroomish to Hariyama, and like maybe even continue going down just a little bit. These are Gen 3 mons going down to like Cacturn, Altaria, Zangoose, Survivor, Tropius. These are the things that are coming from Gen 3. If you guys want to see detailed, uh, like usage of these Pokemon right now, it's up on YouTube, it's in BDSP. If you actually look at a lot of my early BDSP content, I featured a ton of these Pokemon because these were Pokemon that weren't in Sword and Shield. So when we got the ability to use them in BDSP, I jumped on it. I used Zangoose early. I used Cacturn. Cacturn's actually not that bad. Um, Survivor's cool. I've used Survivor before. I've used Tropius. You're not going to see like usage for these Pokemon in VGC like anywhere else on YouTube. So I think that I would, I would definitely say check those out if you're at all interested. We're going to be going over it. But I just wanted to say these Pokemon are really cool. I'm happy they're in the game. And uh, let's continue with Brelum. Brelum's amazing. Breloom is absolutely amazing. We don't have, um, we don't have a Moongus in this gen, but this is the Spore user that we do get. It gets Effect Spore, which is not that great. Poison Heal is great if you're going to be going with a Toxicorp set, and you're going with like a Sub Seeder set in singles with like Leech Seed, good set in singles, but um, Technician is what most people use this guy for in singles and doubles, and again, it's a relatively fast Mon, um, relatively fast Mon, with Spore. I'll answer all those questions that people are asking in just one second. Um, yeah, it's it's really, really annoying because it's a base 70 Mon with 100% accuracy sleep move. So this thing gets enough speed and if it has speed control through use of like Tailwind or any other ability to give it a plus one, it is able to just put things to sleep really, really good. It's an amazing Sash Mon in every single format. Brelum is one of those Mons that like you can lead Fake Out user Brelum and you can go Fake Out Spore. You can go Fake Out the Fast thing right? Spore the slow thing and then next turn the Mon that used Fake Out can just use something to make the other mon like slower than the Breloom, like maybe like a, a rock tomb or something they're slower than the Breloom, and you spore that one right so that you, you basically get a dark void things with Breloom. so it's it's really really hard to play around in singles it's really hard to play around as well um one of the good things about Breloom, like if you want something to learn how to manage Breloom, 
it, you can't spore other grass types. So other grass types are going to be really, really good for dealing with Brelum. Things with overcoat are great for block, blocking spore as well. Things like lumberry, safety goggles. So I would say Brelum is going to be very, very, very good. And I would definitely check it out. Let's uh, read some of these comments. Yo, you responded to my post on Reddit about your content, and I had no idea you were a huge deal. Yeah, I didn't want to toot my own horn. It's funny. Um, I'm going to talk about this. So I, I don't use Reddit. I, I don't use Reddit. Um, I know people use Reddit, but anyways, I was checking my email account that I don't really use that often because um, it's tied to my music stuff, right? And I saw like a Reddit sent me like an email saying like, hey, subreddits that you're in, there's new posts. And one said, as a returning player, what is one piece of advice you'd give? And I'm like, it was like six in the morning. I was eating my, I was drinking my coffee and I was like, and the returning player since Oros. And I was like, Xerneas will never hurt you, man. Cause Xerneas has been like absolutely destroyed into the ground from like Zashi and all the other stuff like that. So I have to comment. And then they replied like immediately. I, I expected no one to reply just cause I was leaving a comment really early in the morning. And they're like, oh, that means a lot. And I was like, the actual piece of advice I would say is go check out stuff on YouTube. Things like Zhang, um, things like Wolf, all the other all the other people um and they said they'd check them out and i was like i also make content if you want help learning stuff like that too because like it's really really hard to get into vgc after a break and i have a bunch of videos talking about like what returning players what newer players need to be looking at for vgc that's kind of what this is as well teaching people the actual things they need to know instead of just giving a i'm not gonna say giving like a vague like a wide thing like our, our thing that's a how, talking about vague and talking about just that but anyways f and chat for freaking rainbow you're glad it's gone i mean it's still in the, it's still in the decks like it's you can use it right now but there's no way to use it with zashians running around i don't know i, I try my best to help that's the thing and kind of case in point like i'm responding to them like we're talking you know you can't do that with the other content creators if you have a question like I, i'm here you know <laughs> that's the thing Still listening to the other vid on YouTube. Much love, mate. Hope you're doing well. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, let me. Someone wanted me to review Donphan. Donphan's only really good in singles. You can't really use Donphan in VGC. Um, we talked about that yesterday. It's one of those mons that has a really, really one-dimensional set for singles. In singles, it's one of the better rock setters. It's probably the best rock, like hazard and spinner in the game. But in VGC, that's not really a play style that you use. And if you were to use something like a Donphan, there's no reason to use like a Donphan over like a T-Tar, in my opinion, personally. Wasn't Xerneas the OG Terramon? I mean, I guess you're right. Like, Xerneas was the OG Terramon. Um, you say Executor would be a good counter to Brelum. It could be a good counter to Brelum. Um, I think that Brelum is just, like, a good mon in general. Like, most, like, a lot of the... I think my first VGC event that I won, I used a Brelum. Like, my first CP event that I won, use, I used Brelum. Like, a, like, official Pokemon TPCI event. It was basically built around Brelum. And I've taken Brelum to a lot of regionals. It's a very, very good mon. It's one of those mons that, like, imagine if Amoongus was fast, how that would mess up your opponent's team preview. That's what Brelum does. They're like, I really like to bring this Heatran, because Heatran would check Brelum, but, like, Brelum could just spore it, you know? And, and if, like, you want to go Heatran with, like, a fake out user, they can just protect with their Brelum for the first turn and then spore you, right? So it's hard to play around Brelum. It introduces a lot of RNG to the game. You can expect to see a lot of it, both singles and doubles. And if you want, um, Further proof of Brelum being good, check out some of the BDSP content because it's everywhere in that format. Um, we're briefly going to talk about Vigoroth because I don't think it's terrible. Um, very briefly. Um, 90 base speed, it can hold Eviolite. It's a decent mon. This Pokemon's going to be good in lower tier singles um, just because it doesn't have the negative ability that Slacking has. It uh, can't be put to sleep, I think. That's Vital Spirit. Yeah. And it's good. Yeah. Um, I think that Vigoroth's like not a terrible Pokemon. So you might see a little bit of it. It's not terrible. Big stab on uh, all its normal moves. Very limited weaknesses on being only fighting type, so it's going to be good. Slacking, on the other hand, um, we didn't see Weezing in the decks, so I don't know um, if it's going to be in the game. But, like, uh, Truant says, Pokemon can't attack on consecutive turns. Let's uh, thank this guy. Mushroom VGC, good morning, everyone. Looking forward to this next round of breakdowns. Happy to hear it. Thank you for the sub. I think it's the second sub of the day, so we got to put some subs up. Would Ally Switch Synchronize stop a Breloom? Ally Switch Synchronize. No, because Breloom can't... Um, so... Yeah, Synchronize doesn't bounce back Sleep. It bounces back, like, Burn. It shouldn't bounce back Sleep. I don't think it does. Anyways, uh, you also... It, it shouldn't work like that. Let's see. Yeah, so it, Synchronize uh, is Burn, Poison, and Paralysis, not Sleep. Um, the thing that you do to beat Brelum is put up Sub, be faster, 
and uh, be faster. <laughs> but no, it's it's a use a grass type. Uh, but, or you can like it spores one of your mons and you punish it with the other mons. So like AOE moves are gonna deal with Breloom because you like deal with it because it's so frail, right? It has to be sashed. Um, do something to break its sash and then finish off with like random AOE move or something. But thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate it. Thank you for the follow on Twitter as well. We're talking about Slacking, though. I think Slacking is a very good Pokemon in singles. It's definitely usable. It's one of those mods because it has the ability Truant, it gets to skip every other turn. So you might as well just slam Giga Impacts with this thing. It's not bad. We've used it in BGC. We've used it in singles. Good mom. That's, that's a good stat line. Base 100 is fast. Um, 160 is amazing. 150 base HP is huge with pretty good defense, and Sped F is okay. It's it's a good mon. It's just like it needs a lot of babysitting, and it needs a team to be built around it. You can... Um, you can like skill swap to take away the ability. There's a couple things you can do with this guy. Um, you can give it, uh, like a different ability through the use of, you know, what is that? What is that ability called? What is that move called? Um, entrainment or something. Um, it can be usable that way, but I realistically think that it's one of those mons that, similar to Gigas, it has to have the right partner in like a neutralizing gas wheezing or something. Maybe like a worry seed whimsicott into it or something. Or a Worry Seed something could work. Yeah, any Worry Seed in the decks? There are, but there, I don't think there's any Pranks or Worry Seed setters. So that's the that's the problem. But I think it's definitely a usable mom. As someone who has used Slacking, maybe, or more than may, maybe anyone else, the downsides of Giga Impact is it locks you in for the true turn. Yeah, so like, that's the thing. You might as well just use Giga Impact since you're going to be locked, like, anyways. You just throw a choice band on this guy and just use this guy to be a one-shot machine. It's great for securing games if you're already slightly ahead. Because even if they have a big physical wall, they their big physical wall is still going to get one-shot. Even if they have, like, a, a Tangrowth, it's still going to get one-shotted by this guy. So it's really, really good at doing stuff like that. Yeah, Simple Beam is another one. So I, I think it's, like, not a bad mod at all. It's probably going to, like... When Slacking's in the team preview, people play weird, right? Especially if you were just, like, weeb with it. Like, who knows? It might get some new moves, too. It might get, like, a U-turn-esque a, a move. That would be sick. If it got, like, a U-turn, that would be really, really cool. Yeah, it locks you in to not switch out. Like, if a ghost comes in, now they get two turns set up. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that's bad. I don't like that. So, that, that sucks. That is... I didn't even I didn't even know that. So, that sucks. Oof, that's bad. You can't remove ability, it fails. So, try and BDSP with Simple Beam. You should be able to remove the ability on Slacking. Hmm. That's weird. Uh, you should be able to. It's weird if it doesn't work. Because it's not one of those abilities like Wonder Guard that's not affected by that. Unless they coded it that way in BDSP, but that's wrong. Anyways. Let's take a look at Hariyama. Battle Tower. Hmm. I guess you just can't. Let's take a look at Hariyama. We were talking a lot about fakeout users in part one. And about how like faster fakeout users, things like Persian and Raichu are going to be very, very popular. Because they can fake out other fakeout users first. Well, Hariyama is the slow fakeout user. You can think of it more like... I've always liked to think of Hariyama like a fusion of Hitmontop and Conkledur. Because it's bulky like a Hitmontop, right? It has Thick Fat, amazing ability. Guts, good ability. Sheer Force, still good ability, right? Um, and it's bulky like Hitmontop. But, and it gets Fake Out like, like Hitmontop. But it's also strong like a Conkledur and gets Sheer Force like a Conkledur. It's built like a Conkledur but with Fake Out, right? So um, I think Hariyama is going to be great. You're going to see, this is the primo fake out user that you're going to see on all the trick room teams so like there's going to be a plethora of teams that are built with torkoal lilligant slowbro hariyama and two other mons right that's that's the thing you go fake out trick room and then you already have the slow hariyama that can start one shot and stuff it also gets um it usually gets knockoff as like a level up move which is not normal so it's like a fighting type thing can still hit ghosts and take away items and it's just really, really good. It gets things like Bellodrome. It gets Detect. Detect's better than Protect, obviously, because it can't get imprisoned as easily. And it gets Bullet Punch. It gets Faint, if you want to pair it with, like, things like AoE moves, like Torkoals and other stuff like that. It also gets Wide Guard. So it's a very, very, very good mon. And we were talking about Guts users a lot yesterday. This is one of the only Guts users that kind of works, just because it's attacks... It, it, the way it's built, once you get the Trick Room up, it's too much of a bully after the Guts. And you can't spore it, right? That's that's the value of Guts on this guy. He's bulky enough to be able to actually use Guts. So yeah, Low Kick's another really, really good move on Hariyama as well. You're going to ex expect to see a lot. Like, if you're looking for breeding things and you want to be helpful to other people, there's nothing wrong with breeding like Hariyamas and Makuhitas because people are always going to want that. All three of these abilities are good. You should definitely 
Like, note down that, like, Hariyama will be a meta Mon in the next game, 100%. 100%. Let's go. Up next, Azuril. We don't really talk about Azuril, but one thing about Azuril most people don't know is that it's a normal fairy. It's not a water type. It's not a water type. If you're ever doing, like, a Nuzlocke and Azuril hits, like, your fire type starter with a bubble, it's not going to do any damage. It doesn't stab it. It's good to know. All right, so this is the Pokemon that we're going to talk about a lot. So I was talking about how, like, you're going to expect to see me using, like, Titar, or you're going to expect to see me using, like, Pelipper at the first regional. If you want a Pokemon to bully other players that are new in Scarlet and Violet, this is the Mon. This is the key to beating people. This is, this is, a, this is a free key. I'm giving you the insider tip. Sable, I will allow you to have a 100% win rate on people that you are better than. Because there's nothing that, like, average to low or even new or even sometimes experienced players can do against a well-played Sableye. It can do so many different things. It gets Fake Out if you want to use it. It gets Quash with Prankster. So you can actually let them get up Trick Room and still Quash them, right? You can... Um, let them get up Tailwind and still quash them. You cannot have anything and just quash them. It makes them go last, right? And it gets so many good things. You can go for Will-O-Wisps. You can go for Tricks. You can go for Recover. You can do so many different things. Sableye is amazing. You can even go Sash Metal Burst, right? Um, you can go Sash Metal Burst with this thing. It's, you can go Faint to break, um, Y Guards and Protects and stuff like that. Like, Sableye is free. I, I, I've won so many events with Sableye. That first event that I said I, would, I won with Breloom, that used Breloom Sableye, and I would go fake out Spore, and then Spore the other one, or Quash Spore the other one. Like, that was the combo that let me win that one, was, was Breloom Sableye. Wild claim, better write this down. I'm not kidding, though. Um, you have to be, you have to already be better than them, though, though. So, like, what you would do, right, is, there's a bunch of other tips. Maybe I should make a video about knowing what sort of stuff you can get away with when playing at in-person events. But there's a bunch of tells you can actually use, um, and it's not like malicious. You're not you're not cheating. It's just stuff you can notice, um, and it's stuff that you can see once the games start to understand the level of player that you're playing against. For the most part, uh, it's kind of just like being able to read people's body language and, and other things like that. But anyways, if you know like the level of the person that you're playing against, Sableye can either be really good or really bad. Like. Case in point. Or, or even if they're they're really good, save like goes back to being really good again, right? So, um, for example, like um, like if I'm playing against like other Twitch, if I'm playing against like Lucky Wolf, Sableye's not, probably not going to be that good. She's been around the block a bit. She understands like how competitive Pokemon works. Sableye is going to be kind of hard to use because she knows, especially she knows me, she knows a lot of the things I like to do. But if I'm playing against like Wolf, right, Sableye goes back to being good again because... Um, it can do so many things. It's really, really hard for those amazing like S tier level players to cover for everything while still being safe. And that's when you hit the, that. That's when you hit players like Wolf with the Metal Burst, right? Because <laughs> he's trying to play around Quash, Fake Out, Will Wisp, all the all the good moves. You hit them with the bad ones. Yeah, S Sableye can do so many different things. And one thing that I highly recommend, if you're actually this is a this is an insider tip for using Sableye, uh, and I've won events by doing this. So if you have Sableye in your team, you go to the regional or go to the premier challenge of the midseason or something like that. You sit down and you pull out a Sableye plushie and you put it down. I, I use, I've used this tactic a bunch of times. But you can use this with any plushie, but it's really good with Sableye. So it gets in a tunnel on the fact that you have Sableye and that like you're a Sableye guy and that your team's like really, really reliant on the Sableye. So what that's going to do is that's going to influence their team preview to make them try and stop the Sableye at all costs because they know that something's going to happen. And the trick is you just don't bring it. But you know if you're comfortable with Sableye, you know what its weaknesses are. Like, for example, let's talk about, like, Sword and Shield. If I'm Sableye guy, I got my Sableye plush, I'm doing my Sableye stuff, and they have an Entity in their team, I don't even need to bring the Sableye. They're bringing the Entity to stop it, right? Mind games. It's important. So, um, and if you could do any extra spice to make the Sableye pop a little bit more, uh, I used to be on a team called Enemy Esports, right? And it's logo it's like little mascot was a little minion guy that looked like sableye and so i had like an armband i sewed and fashioned into a shirt for the sableye that looked like our it, it was sick it was sick and i got so many free wins by people like over respecting the sableye because i've made it such an important part of the like match setup and talking and things like that 
And then they always would be like, you didn't even bring it. And I was like, didn't have to. It did its job, right? So it's stuff like that. Save Light can do a lot of different things. We're not even really even talking about like all the busted things it can do. But I would just say try it. Uh, in single, Sable is also really good. Will o Wisp, Sub, Recover. That's good enough to beat most mons. Um, there's a lot of, like you can put Taunt, Will o Wisp, Sub, Recover, and wall out anything that doesn't have leftovers. Forever. Like you'll, you'll just PP stall them, you just wall them out over time. You can taunt us up and freeze recovery moves. Will Wisp sets a dot that does damage over time. Recover, Sub, Recover, Sub. You have Prankster, Sub, Prankster, Recover. Usually most mons be Will o Wisp, their physical attackers don't do over half. They usually actually don't even break your Sub. So you're free to do whatever you want. Encore is another thing that's like super busted, yeah. Sableye is going to be everywhere. This is my guy for the new gen, and uh, expect to see a lot of it. Expect to see a lot of it. I love Sableye. It's like literally free wins. All right. Wims isn't in this. No, Wims is not in this. So far. So we're going to see Metacham. You don't really see it used to that often, but Pure Power is a good ability. It's basically the same as Azumarill's ability, where it doubles its attack stat. And its attack stat's not super high. It is higher than Azumarill's. But um, 120 is an amazing attack stat after you after you double it, right? And then 80 is a good enough speed stat. It's a good mon. It's a good mon. It gets good moves. I think it gets fake out. It gets all the elemental punches. Uh, it gets faint. Does it get fake out though? It does get fake out. Yeah, it gets fake out. You just don't see this guy very much. It was good when it was Mega Metacham. It was very niche. But it's a glass cannon, like pure power mon. Um, it gets okay moves. It's, it's one of those guys that's just okay. Like, I don't think I'd ever have a reason to use a Metacham on a team in instead of, like, a Breloom. Maybe if I really need a Fake Out user, but if I really need a Fake Out user, I would just use, like, a different Fake Out user, like a Raichu. I think Metacham's really cool. I just don't really see it having a dedicated spot in the meta. Especially, like, it, it's already getting overshadowed by mons that are in the game. This is for VGC, sorry. In singles, Metacham's great. Put a, sa put a Scarf on that thing and go to town. Sweep people up. It's good. Um, but in VGC, like, it's already replaceable by, like, a lot of the mons in the decks, and we haven't even seen, like, all the new mons are gonna have, like, new power creep, and the fact that it's only an 80 base speed just makes it really, really hard to use. Let's see. Next mon. Camerupt. So Camerupt is okay. When it was Mega Camerupt, it actually used to see play uh, a decent amount back in, like, 2016, 2015. It saw play on Trick Room teams. Sure Force was a good ability on it, but it doesn't have Sure Force in any of these. So these are pretty not great abilities. Um, it's also not slow enough to really be able to usable in TR, because remember, we talked about the best TR setter in the format can be Slow or Slow King. They underspeed that and have a four times super effective move against it. So we're probably not going to see that much camera up. It's wasting... It's only a 460 base total. And, like, most of that's an attack, which it doesn't even use. One of the niche things that camera up had back in the day was that it was... It was one of the few Earth Power mons that could actually use Earth Power correctly. Now everything gets Earth Power. It's not nearly as good. It stabs it, but that's not great. It does get Yawn. It does get Eruption. Those are cool options, but realistically, there's no reason to run a camera on your team instead of a Torkoal. And you could say, well, you could run both when it's like, but then you don't have any speed control. Like, there's no reason to really run both of them, at least in my opinion. Maybe something will change. Maybe it'll get like a cool new move or something. Um, but as it stands, its abilities are kind of not great. Its base stats are kind of not great, and there's already better things in the decks. So, camera up. A little bit worse than this guy, Torkoal. Let's talk about the legend, Torkoal. Actually, do you guys want to see... Do you guys want to see a preview of tomorrow's YouTube video thumbnail? Do you guys want to see it? It's cool. If you guys want to see it, if you want to see it, I'll, I'll post it. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the thumbnail for tomorrow's YouTube video ahead of time. It's a good one. Simple Numo was my meme back in the day. Yeah, it's it's definitely usable. I think Numo might even be better than Camera because it, it is slow. Numo is slow. I'll show you guys the thumbnail. I think it's a good one. I think it's so cool. It's my favorite thumbnail I've ever made on YouTube. Maybe. It might be. It actually might be. Love my mom Torkoal. You're Torkoal the Torkoal goaded. Like Torkoal big busted. You know, you know we stand Torkoal here. Look at this. Look at this email. Look at this. Bro! <laughs> like that that's so sick right it's clean <laughs> i'm not the biggest anime guy but i i know this joke right are oh, you doing fine i love it it's perfect right oh that's so good that's gonna be the that's perfection it really is because torkoal big busted just like majin vegeta coming out here hot yo 
Torkoal's so good. That's a fantastic thumbnail. It really is. It really is a fantastic thumbnail, I think. And also, you gotta remember, like, for anyone's like, well, graphic design is my passion, but I know so much. It's like, you gotta remember, it's gonna be like this big. So it's like, it's gonna look even better. So hopefully you guys are gonna watch that video, because it's a good one. Yeah, Torkoal's... Torkoal's busted, right? Torkoal's busted. Thank you. Someone dropped a sub. I don't know who it was, but I appreciate it. Torkoal is absolutely amazing. Um, basically, this guy, there's every every format has weather setters. We talked about Titar. We talked about Pelipper. Torkoal's the sun setter that's going to be important. We don't know if like Ninetales is going to be in the game, but this is good because it makes a it makes a team called Sun Room. Torkoal has the ability Drought, which sets sun for five turns. And basically what you want to do with Drought, we're going to talk a little bit about Lily Gant or Chlorophyll users a little bit later, but you pair the fast Chlorophyll mom with the Torkoal. And so you're enabling your Lily Gant. Lily Gant gets a move called After You, which allows Torkoal to go for like choice specs eruptions on turn one. And so that's something people have to respect on the first turn of the game. They're going to be going with like fake out users, wide guard users, very aggressive tendencies to stop the Torkoal. Now, those same aggressive tendencies do not work the same at stopping a Trick Room. Because in a Trick Room, even if that fake out, you can go double protect trick room right go protect next turn redirection trick room easy peasy lemon squeezy right so it's really really hard to beat both the trick room and the sun fast aspect of these teams we already talked about how torkoal is like the cleanup mom because it has sun which is strong it gives a 1.5 boost to all fire moves it's stabbing the fire moves 85 base special attacks not terrible 20 base speed is amazing for under speeding under trick room bonds and then it gets eruption Right, so it's a 150 base AoE move and just one shots everything. Anyone that's seen my content knows that like we're big Torkoal stands for BGC, and um, it's absolutely amazing. Like Torkoal is going to be everywhere. Very very easy to play team that is a low risk, high reward type playstyle, and definitely going to be good for people that are like learning how to play the format. Very very aggressive. In singles, Torkoal is more of like a rock setter slash like rapid spinner. It's very similar to Dom fan, but it. The bad thing about Torkoal is it takes super effective damage from stealth rocks. So if your opponent already has the rocks up, bringing in your Torkoal to then rabbit spin those away, you're going to take a lot of chip damage from those rocks. So something like Domfan would be better, but in the lower tiers, Torkoal is a good rocks phaser. So, and it can put, set up rocks itself, so good mom. Titar, Torkoal, Pelipper are going to be seen in the first bit. It's going to be everywhere. The first, the first year is just going to be a mixture of those three doing all the stuff, you know, doing all the fun stuff. Cacturn. I don't think anyone... Any, I don't think anyone has a VGC Cacturn highlight other than myself. I think I'm the only person that has ever made a video with this Pokemon in a VGC environment. I might be wrong, but like, it's okay. Cacturn is okay. These are good abilities. Sandvale views on Sandstorm is, is good in VGC. Um, Water is great in singles. In VGC, it's not as good because um, it's not Storm Drain, but in singles, it's fine. Water is a good ability. So unique stat line on this Pokemon. I've always thought of Cacturn as a really, really weird guy because it has a big attack and special attack and then like nothing else. So you can use a couple different playstyles. You can Life Orbit if you're going to be going for like a mixed sweep. I think this is, I think Cacturn is best built, I'll just say it, as a mixed sweeper. It's one of those things to where this is one of those really, really weird scenarios. No one's ever like talked about this before, but like this is one of those few Pokemon that you can waste all of your points in like attack and special attack and then like throw a sash on it right um this is another one of those weird ones another pokemon that can do this kind of well is something like kiram or or like reshiram kind of can do this too and you just throw like a scarf on it or like put like a tailwind user next to it so it's still technically fast enough even with like very minimal speed investment and you basically just only invest in attack and special attack and rely on your teammates for speed control and then you just have really really good coverage because it gets things like it gets Sucker Punch, which is great. Um, it gets, uh, you know, big grass moves. Um, look at all the things it gets. It gets Destiny Bond if you want to use that. That's kind of funny. It gets. It used to be the only Pokemon that got Spiky Shield. It's a pretty cool stuff. Yeah, Surf Spam for the heals if you want to pair it with that. It gets really unique stuff. Like, uh, also, I've used Sash Counter sets before. It's an underrated Mon. Like, it gets unique things. And, you know, like, Focus Blast is a really weird thing to see on it. Nasty Pot's really weird to see. Swords Dance is weird to see. It can do a bunch of unique stuff. In the lower tiers of singles, it's good. I wouldn't really say that, like, Cacturn's ever, ever going to be meta. But if you see it, I just told you, like, all the different things it can do. So it shouldn't be able to pull a fast one. I think the, the big thing about Cacturn is it's a dark type that can use Stab Sucker Punch, which is, and a 115 base attack stat is a lot higher than people actually think about. So... Just don't get sucker punched by the cacturn and get one-shotted, and you'll probably be fine. 
All right. Going into Altaria, we were talking a little bit about Golduck and how like Cloud9 was what a lot of people might be using Golduck for in this format. Altaria is a better Cloud9 user being able to eliminate the effects of weather. So all that cool stuff with Torkoal, uh, Pelipper, Titar, Altaria comes in um, and just basically negates the weather so those Pokemon don't get their boosts anymore and don't enable those teammates. So Altaria is pretty good. Um, good stat line. It gets a bunch of really cool moves. I think they actually took Dragon Dance from it in BDSP, if I'm wrong. Yeah, they, it used to get Dragon Dance. It doesn't get it anymore. It is a Parish Song user. It gets things like Moonblast because it used to have a Mega that was a Fairy type. So it still kind of gets Moonblast. It's a good Mon. Like, people sleep on Altaria. It egg moves Tailwind. And we don't know if Tailwind's going to be like um, like a move to remove or anything like that in the new game. So like, if there are like six Tailwind users in the format and this one stops Weather, people are going to use this. Like, you can go Altaria and a Fake Out user. You can Fake Out the thing that would mostly threaten the Altaria. Soak damage from the other one. Maybe you have a Sash or something. Get up your Tailwind. And then once the Tailwind's up, you should be able to just win, right? So it's one of those things to where it's very, very niche. But it will see play, um, depending on the meta. Also, like, Flying Dragon typing is good. Um, it's a good typing. Only really weak to a few things. Things like Fairy, things like Rock, things like Ice, other Dragons. You can Terra to change it to... A, it's a little mini Rayquaza. Yeah, it's a mini Rayquaza... And it's bulky in some situations. Like, it also gets access to, like, Cotton De cotton Guard and a couple other things, too. So, I don't dislike Altaria. I will say one cool thing about it is it can, like, TR moves like Flamethrower, um, which you don't normally see um, on... I mean, I'm, dragons can, but it's just, like, uncommon for walls to be able to get Flamethrower. So, it's a cool mod. Uh, expect to see a decent amount of it uh, once the metas get figured out. Or even just, like, sposhed onto a team. You always have to respect their ability to switch in an Altaria to take away your weather and punish you on that same turn. So it's a pretty cool mod. And in singles, uh, if they give it back Dragon Dance, it might be able to do something. But other than that, it's like a low-tier mod in singles. Zangoose. Um, Zangoose is mostly used in singles. In doubles, it doesn't really have like the moves it really needs. Will I do a video training my team for Scarlet and Violet, please? Um, well, realistically, like when it comes to stuff like that, I, I, I could. But like, you could watch anyone do those sort of things, right? Um, I'm going to just get my teams as fast as possible, and there's nothing really... Like, alright, for as for as how serious we are about min-maxing, I'm not that serious about it in my real, like, life. Like, uh, all the regionals I've top cut, uh, events that I've won, the majority of that stuff wasn't even done with, like, six or five Ivy Pokemon. You kind of just use what you have. Um, and as a content creator, I have to get content out very, very fast, so, like... You know, on day three, when people are, like, perfectly getting their teams, I'm going to be on the ladder with, like, maybe one IV perfect speed, like, timid nature mons. You know, it's like, and that's good enough, because you need to do that to, like, learn. I want to learn more other than, like, spend my time, like, breeding and stuff like that. So, I don't know if I'll do, like, a video talking about, like, training your team, but I will say that, like, A Drive's probably going to make one, Austin John Plays is going to make one, Philly Beats is going to make one. You can definitely watch all those with people and they'll, they'll take the time to explain it and probably go a lot more in detail about like training your teams because like with me i kind of just use whatever and it's it just is fine because i know what i'm doing <laughs> like i i think you can i think it's honest to say it that way too you know a lot of people are right, I, I was watching i was watching a super eye patch wolf video where there was um he's talking about how you shouldn't listen to like content creators when they say like here's the secret to getting to growing on Twitch or growing on YouTube or here's what here's how I did this just copy me and you'll be good because those content creators and those people that did those things did so under completely different circumstances like Ninja made this guide right talking about like how you can grow on Twitch and like Ninja grew on Twitch like eight or nine years ago because he was an a pro for Halo a completely different game like this the situation in which Esports, Twitch, all that stuff was is completely different than growing on Twitch now. Like Ninja was great at growing back then, but like those tools that he was that he was good at don't really translate now and he already has his audience. So for him to tell you what he did, it wouldn't help you. Right? I can safely say, like, the things that I do, I'm telling you right now, don't don't copy me when it comes to like building teams. Um like the actual building phase because I'm not gonna tell you what you need to know because I'm just gonna do what I need to do for me. Like I said, um, case in point, like that Sceptile team I top cut Lancaster, National, or Lancaster Regionals with, it had like, had, all right, so there's six total IVs on a team for each, for each month. Six total per month times six, 36. That's a potential for 36 perfect IVs. I went undefeated in Swiss 
Bro, I had like seven perfect IVs. And that's just because I know how to play the team, you know? And when going into it, I knew which ones were perfect, which ones weren't perfect. I knew which ones were at 23. I knew which ones were at 10. I knew the stats on all my Pokemon. And I knew the calcs for all these stats. I, I, I basically didn't have the time to get everything perfect because it's really freaking hard. But I did have the time to run the numbers with the ones that I, with the stats that I had on hand. And so I'm probably not the best person for like watching to um, flawlessly make a team from scratch. Like I could do it, but in reality, if you were to ask me to, to do that, I would not. <laughs> Does that make any sense at all? I think the fact that I can say that honestly instead of, instead of trying to tell you something you think you might need to hear is the, that's a good thing, right? I think that's, I think that's good. Remember when, remember when we were talking about Zangoose? I can be honest and say that like, I skip a lot of, um, I, I skip a lot of the really like important things. Like if, if you were to tell me to like, all right, you can have like a three IV Pokemon or you can spend like two more hours breeding and get a five IV one. I'd be like, I'm good. <laughs> Give me speed and attack. I'm good to go. Anyways, let's get back into Zangoose. So yeah, Zangoose is only really good in singles. Um, Toxic Boost is a good ability for being able to double its speed. This is a good Mon to use with Facade, right? It's different. It's it's it, the good. The reason why Zangoose is good and Ursaring is bad is because it has a higher it has a it has a high enough attack stat and has a good speed stat. Ursaring doesn't have the speed stat, right? Um, Zangoose just comes out and can KO something, do something. And then at the end of turn where it already did something, then it activates its Toxic Boost, and now it's Facades Online, and it can actually do a bunch of stuff. Zangoose gets, like, close combat. It gets Swords Dance. It gets a bunch of really cool stuff. It's, like I said, it's only really good in singles, but um, it's cool. Everyone likes Zangoose. So um, I would say definitely try and use Zangoose sometime if you have never used it before. It's a great mod in singles in the lower tiers. So Viper actually gets a bunch of really cool moves. I've never really seen other content creators use Viper, but so Viper gets one really, really cool move, and it has enough base stats it's built very similar to cacturn right where it's high attack and special attack what i like doing as a viper is choice scarfing it and using final gambit so choice scarf survivor with final gambit people never see that shit coming it also gets like switcheroo and then it has like good coverage for stuff um but it has a like, good base hp 73 base hp on a final gambit's good final gambit takes your total hp stat and hits something for that same amount so if you go full hp investment full speed investment with like a choice scarf you can just get something right off the board. Uh, it's great for hitting, um, I think the Tapus had base 70. So you could actually one-shot a Tapu Fini with this thing, one-shot a Tapu Lele, Coco, Bulu, all those things. And it was really, really good. Because, you know, you may say, well, it's a poison type. Just hit them with a poison attack. Well, you still wouldn't KO things like Tapu Fini that way. So it was really, really good for those sort of meme teams. It's probably one of the more niche Final Gambit users. And that's probably how I'd play it in any format where I was going to play it. You put a Switcheroo on it, put Final Gambit on it, maybe earthquake and uh, like a poison attack or like maybe you can build it special if you want and you can put like crunch in it uh or you know what i mean you can be built physical or special it's flamethrower sludge bomb it gets a bunch of really cool moves um but i think final gamut is the best thing it's really bringing to the table tropius is in the game i use tropius like the first week bdsp came out these are good abilities harvest is good solar power is good uh corvil is good it's slow but not too slow it's base HP is its best stat, and that's kind of not great because it means can you might get diminishing returns on defense and speed up if you don't make it right. Um, it has really low attack and special attack, but one cool thing that Tropius gets that a lot of people sleep on is Dragon Dance, and it gets Dragon Hammer, which is a, a unique move in general. It just slams its face into things. But yeah, Dragon Dance is kind of cool. I think Dragon Dance Tornadus is more of a meme, but it's funny when it works, and I think this Pokemon is just, it's not great. But it's funny. So like if you can secure wins with Tropius, it's funny, but I don't I don't think this Pokemon will ever really be viable in singles. Like I usually build this thing with uh, a sash. Just even and it's sad. It this is a its best stat is are its bulks, and I still build it with sash because it's still frail because it's not that great. So rip rip uh, Tropius, but it is what it is. Alright, let's talk about Glalie. Glalie's better in singles than it is in doubles but it does see play in both formats uh just thanks to moody being able to randomly boost its stats people like to use this thing with like sub uh and other like 
what is it like other defensive options like protect a fish from moody procs and then they just go for like sheer cults in um this is this is a pokemon you see in like battle tower runs a lot and in battle stadium singles this is one of the few formats where this pokemon's really really good um you say where's the tropius love i mean i used it it's just like not usable compared to like anything else like i'd rather use like vigoroth than a tropius vigoroth is a better pokemon than tropius is um, yeah, this Pokemon pops up in Battle Stadium singles where there's no, um, one eight KO clause like there would be on Smogon. And then in VGC, again, every once in a while you see it, and that's probably only because people are already using it in Battle Stadium singles, and they're using their Battle Stadium singles time teams sometime in VGC. Other than that, it's not that great. It's, it's straight base 80s across the board. It's bulkier than people give it credit for, but in reality, it doesn't really do that much, and people mostly just wait and use Sheer Cold with it. It does get Freeze Dry upon evolving, which is a good move, but... It is what it is. It's kind of just okay. Um, you don't really see it all that often. One thing I'll say, we're going to look at Shogun very briefly. Shogun does not get Dragon Tail. If they gave Shogun Dragon Tail, that would be sick. But they won't. Dude, I would love to use Eevee Light Shogun, but they never give a dra Dragon Tail. They do give Dragon Tail to Salamence a lot of the time, though. Salamence is going to be amazing. Salamence, an Intimidate user, which is what we've already talked about to, to be like one of the better or best ability in VGC. Good in singles, very similar to Gyarados. The same uh, argument I said about Gyarados works for Salamence as well. You can use Moxie and try and just get a KO and start sweeping things. You can put a Choice Scarf on it, you can do whatever you want, that's great. Or you can put Intimidate. Intimidate intimidates both Pokemon, and in singles, that's just the one thing. But after the Intimidate, they won't be able to KO you anymore. And you can get a free Dragon Dance. And one Dragon Dance is more valuable than Moxie procs because a Dragon Dance comes with a speed boost. So after you get the KO, you can then get more KOs. So Salamence is going to be amazing. In other formats where Salamence was one of, if not the most dominant Pokemon, the, um, and I'm talking about VGC, what you actually saw a lot of was Choice Scarf Salamence. And every single person ran Choice Scarf Salamence with uh, Draco Meteor so you could Oko their Salamences. And it became like a big speed tie format. Um, so hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, but if it does happen, you know, you can start teching Habonberry Salamence to start walling out their Salamences, punishing them, make your Salamence a little bit bulkier, give it some other coverage moves, and make your Salamence just stickier on the board than theirs. Uh, if you want to see videos on that, I have videos going all the way back to 2014 on my channel. So if that's something that happens, if people are watching this video on Scarlet and Violet's out and Choice Scarf Salamences everywhere, I'm here to help you out. There are definitely things you can do to make your Salamence um, a much more valuable teammate than just a one-trick pony with a Choice Scarf. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps. It, it, Salmon's can do everything. It can be physical. It can be special. It can do so many things. But Varel dropping the big sub. Appreciate it. Appreciate the big sub, my friend. Buenos dias. Appreciate it. What's your favorite dragon use out of Dragonite? Altaria Salamence. Um, I, I guess it's Dragonite. I'm not the big Salamence stan. I, I mean, I've always been a Garchomp guy. And Garchomp players, it's like, they're like Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII players. You know? Final Fantasy VII players hate Final Fantasy VIII stands, and Final Fantasy VIII stands hate Final Fantasy stands, or Final Fantasy VII stands. Garchomp players, we shun the, we shun the Salamence believers. And Salamence players are like, oh, it's so much better than Garchomp, it has Intimidate, it has all these other coverage against Dragon, it's so good, but like, I'm a Garchomp guy, which means I have to, my, my nemesis is Salamence players. So, and then Dragonite wasn't even good until like the past like five years. Other than that, it was terrible. Dragonite's okay. Um, and so that's why I'm like, is it Altaria? <laughs> right? I don't dislike Altaria. I like Altaria. So it might be Altaria out of those. That's a good question. But thank you so much, uh, Bapero, for the big sub. Appreciate it. Um, thank you. You're going to see a lot of Salamence. Um, there was a very popular core uh, in 2018, and it's very popular every single year that it can be used. It's called Japanese Sand, and it's created by a Japanese player. And it's basically, the core is Tyranitar, Sanrishmon, Salamence. You may be thinking... What does Salamence do there? Well, Salamence intimidates, right? It has the speed control from a Choice Scarf usually. Um, and then it makes it so the if you intimidate them, it makes it so your, your Sand Rush Mons and your Titar don't take that much damage from physical Mons. But then also, what are those Mons weak against? Fighting, ground, water, grass, all the types that Salamence resists. So Salamence can come in, pivot, soak damage, intimidate, repin, set up, AoE, special attacker, physical attacker, fusion. They're just kind of built to work together, right? So expect to see a lot of like Tyranitar and Salamence on the same squad in the next gen. In any format. Singles, doubles, what have you. Very, very good month. Another Intimidate user. Staraptor. 
this was one of the best weeds in Gen 4. Um, Intimidate is still the ability that I would recommend to use this thing on. It's really, really good in BGC with Intimidate, um, but in singles, a lot of people like to go Reckless because it gets a boost to its like recoil moves. I, I personally, like if you want to like Life Orb Reckless or like, um, like Choice Band Reckless, like go nuts in singles, that's a big nuke on base 100s, but I am a fan of the Choice Scarf Intimidate Straptor, pivoting in with U-turns, coming in, soaking damage. Good mon. Um, this was like the, I think this was the start of just power creep in general. Like, Gen 1, eh. Gen 2, eh. Gen 3, eh. Gen 4, they gave us a bird with 100 base speed, 120 attack, that got close combat. Like, before this happened, that was not normal for you to get like a secondary base 120 move. That wasn't, you, some things got double edge, but th this was like the start of power creep. And now like everything gets close combat, everything gets earthquake, everything gets all the bolt beams and all the big moves. But like, this is where it started um, <laughs> back in gen four. So Straptor's really, really good in singles. In doubles, it's a little bit harder to use. It's basically like a choice card final gamut mon in doubles. We already talked about how choice card final gamut works. Sometimes it gets tailwind. Yeah, oh, and it didn't used to get Final Gambit. Final Gambit's a relatively new addition to it. It has an 85 base HP, which makes it one of the better Final Gambit users out there, um, being able to KO anything with a lower than base 85 uh, HP pool. So it's a good mon, and you can do so many things. Like, you can go um, Brave Bird, Close Combat, Final Gambit, U-Turn on a Choice Scarf set. That's the common set in both formats for this guy. So very, very good mon. Uh, I'm going to use a lot of Straptor. I also think it's shiny. is one of the cooler shinies. Uh, personally, I don't really like shinies all that much, but I think that looks cool. So yeah, Straptor's a good mon, and it's a great weed. It's a great safe way to start the game in most situations, because if you start the game with Straptor and you start the game off of an Intimidate, you can pivot uh, in singles and in doubles, same thing. So you're pretty safe in most situations by using this thing. Another Intimidate user. Yo, Intimidate, best ability. Luke's right, Intimidate user. Um, you don't really use Rivalry. You don't really use Guts. We talked a little bit about how Guts is not that great in these formats. Too much work and an item investment that puts a negative dot on you just to get a plus one attack. Not really worth it. I'd actually rather use Rivalry than Guts because it's not item. Like, your item's more valuable than your ability a lot of the time, at least in my opinion. So uh, Intimidate, really, really good ability. Uh, Luke's is going to be an amazing Pokemon in the next game. I think it's better than people give it credit for and it actually just keeps getting a little bit better every single gen um it depends on how popular like ground move ground mons are uh, and if there's a lot of earth power mons but if it's a lot of physical ground mons looks like can be really good i think i actually have a weakness policy looks right if it gets like just a little bit more coverage you know i'm not i'm not saying give it fake out i'm not saying give it like quick guard or like some crazy good move like just a just a little bit more coverage right? And what I mean by coverage is like right now it has wild charge and that's good. It didn't used to have this. It used to have to use spark back in the day. So wild charge, good. Crunch, good. Um, it has double kick and you can see in BDSP, it loses superpower, right? So it just needs, it needs just a little bit more coverage. I don't even think it needs like, like we were just talking about, it doesn't need fake out. It doesn't need it, right? It doesn't need like U-turn, just needs a little bit more coverage. And I, I think I would use a weakness policy one. Because if you can intimidate their ground mon that wants to earthquake, that's kind of sick, right? And then you can also tear it to change its type to actually make it easier to proc a weakness policy. And this thing has, it has the damage. It has like the stat line to just roll the game over after a policy with a little bit of speed control. Um, yeah, well, the thing is like, you can't just do that though. You can't just switch its attack and special attack. That would make it too broken. There'd be no reason to run other electric types, right? It doesn't need more speed. It just needs like a little bit more coverage. Like make sure it has a fighting move. I'm good then, you know? Spark, Spark good, 30% para, don't give Luke's right coverage, give him bulk. I, I see, I, I don't think you need to change its stats. And I, I think a lot of mons, so people always ask to change stats. I don't think that like stat changes, like stat changes are, uh, it's a, it's one of those things that we're like, I see stat changes the same way when people introduce cats to stop rats. And then like cats become like an invasive species that like destroy the ecosystem. Like when you start changing the base stats of Pokemon, it throws everything out of whack. But if you just give like one mon like one move, that could be taken away at the end of a gen. Like that can be like moved around and certain stuff like that. I, I think just give it superpower back and it's be it'd be fine. You say Alecky and Zapdos won't be get out of by Luke's Ray? So if Luke's Ray had a 120 base special attack. It, they would <laughs> right they would because it has intimidate fuck like do, do you know how good that is that intimidate means you get to play the game correct like 
you get to invalidate half of the damage that is dealt if you use Intimidate correctly, right? That's ridiculous. You say it's too slow to be viable. It's not. 70 is not slow for what it does, right? For what it does. You, you guys are thinking of electric types as they have to be fast. Luxray says you don't, right? You don't have to be fast. It has Intimidate. Like, you're not so... Your Intimidate users aren't fast. That's not like a... I mean, they can be, but like... The bulk, like, it's Incineroar. It's basically, imagine if Incineroar was Special Attacker. That's what you guys are asking for. It's, like, way too crazy. Blossom, my touch spend, plus 10 to both their defenses. Kirby Dance, Strength Stab, all Gen 7. So I think Luxray can get, like, plus 5. See, I don't think that you can... I think Blossom is a shittier Pokemon than Luxray. You can't, you can't just do that to a Pokemon that already has Intimidate. I don't think it needs plus 5. And I, I think if you... This is one of those Pokemon to where if they buffed it significantly, even, even not even significantly, like, at all in the stat department it would be everywhere and the problem with it being everywhere in my opinion is that it can't realistically check itself so we talked a little about salamence salamence being everywhere well they trade if you know they trade effectively um it, when incineroar is everywhere you guys have played against incineroars right and like when you're stuck in Incineroar and Incineroar mirrors it's just a parting shot and the game lasts forever and it's like uh, that's that's a, it's not a fun new player experience. It's not it's not like a engaging thing that like a lot of newer players want to deal with. It would be frustrating for players to learn how to deal with Luke's Ray if every single team had one. In my opinion, I mean half the reason Incineroar is so manageable is because they have to flare blitz so much. Now, nah, see, I don't think that that's that's you can you can't say that that's healthy for the game though, right? That's, that's a selfish wish, which is fine, but it's just not like, yeah, <laughs> I'm not biased at all, right? Yeah, so it's like, it's one of those things to where it has the stat line already. You can't give it more. And also for someone saying like, it wouldn't be replacing Regilecki and Zapdos, those Pokemon aren't in the game. And even if they were, like the fact that I think it could replace them and they're like legendary Pokemon that are better. Though, Zapdos and Regilecki are better than like half the restricteds in the game. And if I think Luxray can hang with them, that means Luxray is better than like half of the restricted Pokemon in the game. If you just like gave it a little tweak to its stats. That's ridiculous. This Pokemon's really, really good. And in singles, it's good too. Uh, I think like Volt Switch was a good... Like this thing's Volt Switch would be a 120 base special attack Volt Switch Luxray with Intimidate. Like... Pfft. That'd be so dumb. <laughs> just fucking one shot everything. Yeah, it gets Snarl too. You know, it's a good mon. It's a really, really good mon. People sleep on Luxray. It's a good mon. All right. We actually did all of Gen 3. We're in the middle of Gen 4 right now. Let's look at Vespaquin. Right? No, we're still in Gen 3, aren't we? No, we're still in Gen 3. These are... No. This is Gen 4 Pokemon. We started Gen 4. There we go. Yeah, so Vespaquin. Let's take a look at Vespaquin. Vespaquin is not great in VGC, but in singles, it can be kind of unique. It gets pressure, which is nice under... It's too slow to work in any format and not slow enough to really work in Trick Room. It has a good stat line, believe it or not, but it has just too many weaknesses. The one cool thing that Vespaquin gets is it still gets Toxic, and it gets a healing move in most situations, like usually Roost. It used to get Heal Order, but um, yeah, it gets Toxic, and so it's one of the few Toxic stallers that are still left in the game, and so that's good. Um, Seuss dropping this up. Appreciate it. Why did they take away Heal Order? It, I think it was a coding issue. I think I remember hearing that, that it was like a coding issue for Heal Order. Or like something with like Mimic or like, I think it was a coding issue and they're like, it already has Roost, it's fine. But um, yeah, Vespaquin gets Toxic. So you can just put up Toxic and stall. And that's basically it. Um, that's one's okay. I, I think it's fun to use Vespaquin, but it's not a good mod. Way too many weaknesses and it's just really hard to use. If it gets Heal Order or Roost back, it should be interesting because you can tear the weakness away. Well, there you go. There you go. It could be interesting, but probably only in singles. VGC, it's just way too hard to lose, use. It gets killed by flying moves, killed by rock attacks, killed by fire attacks, killed by electric attacks. Like, this thing has like a million weaknesses. It's just way too hard to use. And we're going to talk about Pachirisu in just a minute, but I'm going to take the first break of the day, and I will be right back. I'm going to be right back. I will be back in one minute. I will say in this time, do me a favor. Go check out that link I just put, it's the new song that I just made on Spotify. New song I just made in the band where I play everything. I do the vocals, I do the bass, I do the guitars, I do everything. Go check it out. It's right here. Uh, let me know what you think. 
any plays on this, any saves on it, or any like save follows on the actual band page, really help me out, believe it or not. And uh, I'll be back in one minute. I'll be back in one minute. Go listen to this song and let me know what you think when I get back. I would I would appreciate the feedback. Very All right, good. so we were talking about um, Pachirisu. Let's talk about Pachirisu. It's one of those mons that like I think is definitely overhyped. I think Pachirisu is overhyped. Um, and it's because Sage Park obviously top cut. Or, sorry, won the world championship with it in 2014. It's probably the best follow me user in the format. Maybe there might be like one other one that I haven't really seen yet. There's not that many follow me users in the game at all. So the fact that he gets follow me is really, really good for doing redirection. It's more consistent than something like a Rage Powder. Because you can just avoid Rage Powder with like a Grass type or even an item like a Safety Goggles. Very, very good mon. Um, it gets Volt Absorb, so you can get rid of those electric attacks. But, um,. The thing with Pachirisu is it's like not as bulky as you think. The reason why Seijun Park did so well with it is because he had like multiple like intimidate spams and other things like that. Like Seijun Park's just really good. He can make any Pokemon look good. He kind of just chooses this one. Um, and he'd been using it like all year before like actually taking it to the World Championships. It gets some good moves. Super Fang's good. Nuzzle's good. Charm's good. Um, it gets Helping Hand, I think, too. Fake Tears. It gets good moves. Follow Me's really, really good. But, like, I think, um, in general, like, we're probably gonna see a lot of it, but I do think it's overhyped. And it's not, like, the, the free win. Like, when people think of, like, oh, I'm gonna use the World Championships, like, our Champions team, I'm gonna win. Eh, it's hard to play, and it's not easy street just because it won Worlds. He's just really, really good. Yeah, he chose it for Volt Absorb. I mean, Follow Me was what made it good, you know? Follow Me is what made it, it good, and he really likes his Pokemon. Seijun's an amazing player, so... Think about using it. In singles, it's not good. In singles, Pachirisu is not that good because it's best move follow me doesn't do anything in, in uh, singles. Drift Blim. Okay, so let's talk about Drift Blim. There's a few things about Drift Blim worth talking about. Yeah, Pachirisu gets pickup so you can use it to find a Destiny Knot, right? Um, Drift Blim is mostly used for Unburden. If it uses a held item, it gets a double speed boost. So what you would use to do with this guy was pair it next to like a, a terrain setter, like a psychic terrain, misty terrain, electric terrain, grassy terrain, and use a respective seed to get a 1.5 boost to whatever defense the seed gave. And then um, basically you would be able to go for like plus two speeds and be able to double a base 80 speed, which is a good number, and then go for like tailwinds or will-o'-wisp or strength saps or anything like that. The fact that it learns tail when it's a level up moves, really, really good. Um, Drift Blim's amazing. If there are going to be any train setters at all, this guy will be 1000% meta and kind of similar to Lily Cole. It's one of those things that like is hard to deal with because um, it's always going to be faster. It's, fu it's functioning at basically a prankster speed stat um, and that's just going to be really hard to deal with. It gets decent coverage too. Uh, it gets things... Does it get Thunderbolt? It might. Minimize Baton Pass is viable in singles ladder again. I know, right? Um, well, it's going to be banned immediately. But it also gets, like, Minimize, Baton Pass, all those stupid things. Uh, it gets Haze. It gets Destiny Bond. I've used Destiny Bond at Regionals on it before. Yeah, it gets Thunderbolt, uh, Shadow Ball, um, obviously will Wisp, Thunder Wave. A bunch of cool stuff on Drift Blim. Drift Blim is always one of my favorites. And I like Drift Blim a lot. But um, I think it just has more of, like, a meme category i kind of want to use drift Blim in vgc like soon it might it might not be bad in like series 12 i think i might try that just wisp of zashi like a lot of people just aren't prepared for that right now i might try some drift Blim. it's a very very fun mon to use and people kind of forget when better things come out but it is cool and it might see play it'll definitely see play in scarlet and violet um if there are train setters or other ways to get like an unburden activate you might even just like wider to activate like often intimidate get a plus two speed boost that way that could definitely be how it works or like an adrenaline orb if adrenaline orb still in the game it gets strength sap yeah it's good let's go uh miss magis we were talking a little bit about um mischievous earlier miss magis is the better option so we talked a lot about how like gengar invalidated so many other ghost types back when it had levitate this is basically just like a slightly worse gengar five less speed um 25 less special attack but it gets better coverage than Gengar because he gets Mystical Fire. So having a fire attack, being able to hit those steel types, very, very good. Power Gem is also good coverage. And it still gets a bunch of the other unique moves that Gengar gets. Um, it still gets the Taunt. Um, it still gets Thunderbolt. So it still gets all the other coverage that Gengar would get. Um, Energy Ball, same thing. Will O' Wisp, Nasty Plot, all those type of things. But it has Levitate. So there are times when this is a good Pokemon to use. 
And I think Miss Magus is good. It's definitely slept on. Um, it has a much, a lot more spadef than things like Gengar do too. So it's just a different option as opposed to Gengar. But I do think it's definitely a good mon. It's a lot better in singles than I would say in doubles. But you never really know. Miss Magus might see play in both formats. I think it could, uh, depending on like having Levitate and being able to Terra into an Electric type means you have no weaknesses, which is kind of cool. So that might that might end up being a thing, right? And then it can also. It gets Thunderbolt, so it stabs those electric moves and stuff like that, too. So that's kind of clean. That's kind of clean. Honchcrow. Um, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Honchcrow's okay in singles. It's one of like the mid-tier mods in singles because it gets like Super Luck, Moxie. Those are good abilities. But Murkrow's better than Honchcrow in VGC. In reality, in, in, in VGC, if you're going to be looking for like a bird to use, Straptor's just a better mod. It has almost the same attack stat, and it has like 29 more base speed. And you're, you're generally going to be building this thing as a physical attacker. This is a good HP stat. This thing reminds me of two cannon <laughs> for, for VGC. It's just not that great. Um, it's just not that great. Murkrow with Prankster is going to be much, much, much better. It gets Quash, like same like Murkrow, but it doesn't have Prankster, right? It loses the Prankster. Um, it does get Perish Song, which is cool, but it doesn't get Tailwind, I don't think. Does it? Murkrow, got, Murkrow gets Tailwind. It has to get Tailwind. There's Tailwind. It gets Tailwind as a level up, but like it's too slow to make it work in most situations. And that's just my opinion. I think it's uh, one of those mods that's just there's better birds out there. Murkrow's better. Bronzong, though, absolutely amazing Pokemon. Like, this is going to be such a good Trick Room Setter. We were talking about the Pokemon that you want to pair for, like, a second Trick Room Setter. So, like, if you were to go Slowbro as your main Trick Room Setter, you can go Bronzong as your secondary Trick Room Setter and cover up for a lot of the same weaknesses. Bronzong's weak against, like, Fire, um, Ground, depending on what sort of ability you have. Slowbro can come in and, like, you know, wall those things. Yeah, all Honchkrow really has was a strong Sucker Punch. I would agree. I would agree. And this thing's slow enough. I, I use this thing all the time. Uh, Bronzong's amazing. And one really cool thing about Bronzong is it gets gravity in a lot of formats. So you can go for like Trick Room, gravity, and then it allows your teammate to do stuff. But then Bronzong can go for gravity boosted hypnosis in the Trick Room. And it's a really, really fun mon to use, I think. I love using Bronzong. Very, very bulky mon. Very, very hard to get rid of mon. You can put a mentor on it and basically do whatever you want with it. Yeah, Z Trick Room Hypnosis Bronzong. Yep, those, that was fun back in the day. I remember that. Like, that was, that was a pain to deal with back then. Z-Move, I think it boosted your accuracy too, right? So it was, it was stupid. It was so dumb. But uh, yeah, it's a fun mod to use. In singles, it's both, it's basically uh, just like a stealth rocker. Um, I think it might get teleport, which is what you would use it for in singles. So you'd, you'd basically just be able to pivot safely from stuff. But it, it also can be used on aggressive teams and go for like imprison trick room. And you just have it on your team to imprison other trick room setters. So it's a cool mon. Uh, I definitely think it's going to see play in no matter what the format. Very, very good mon. Let's take a look at Luca, Luca, Lucario. Lucario. Amazing Pokemon uh, in any format. Singles, doubles. Very, very good. Step fast doesn't really see play. Inner focus, remember, makes it so you can't get flinched. But also, since Sword and Shield, it makes it so you cannot get intimidated. Very, very good. Justified's good if you want to go for beat up strats into it, but mostly people use inner focus. In both singles and doubles. It has a good stat line. 90 isn't super fast, but it's definitely fast enough to work. Um, being able to dual stab two very, very aggressive and defensive typings of uh, fighting and steel, very, very good. It's one of the few extreme speed users. People always think it doesn't have like an amazing special attack and they always build physical, but it has a good special attack. It gets good coverage. But um, yeah, I think it's just a good mon. It actually used to get follow me back in Gen 7. And they took that away, which I think was balanced. People were realizing you could just throw like a Lucario on a team that's like protect, follow me, close combat, extreme speed or meteor mash, and you'd be good to go. And they changed that so you couldn't do that anymore. Um, but Lucario is still good. I think it's really, really good. Imagine if the inner focus buff happened in Gen 7, Mega Lucario being intimidate proof pre-Mega would have been nasty. Yeah, Mega Lucario was just really good. And Mega Lucario also built like, was built special a lot. Um, just, just to avoid intimidate. Right, um, but yeah, it's very, very good. Extreme speed is a good move in both singles and doubles. In singles, I like this guy a lot with Sash. You can go a mixture of like Swords Dance, Extreme Speed, Meteor Mass, Close Combat, stuff like that. And uh, in doubles, it's still good. I'd say Riolu is better in a lot of situations. I guess we could talk about Riolu as well. It does get Prankster, right? So that's what's good about Riolu. It used to get Follow Me just like Lucario. The thing that people use Riolu with right now, you may be thinking, why would you ever use a Riolu when you could use Lucario? Well, Riolu gets Copycat, and you can go for Copycat boosted by Prankster to copy the last known used move. And so in singles, there used to be a strat you could use to Copycat Roar and basically skip their turn every single turn and make them take like Stealth Rocks or Hazard Damage. 
Um, but in VGC right now, people like to copycat a max guard that's boosted off of a Trick Room from a Dynamax mod to set Trick Room. And that's not going to be in the next game. So, um, like, it won't work that way because you can't max guard to do that first. You can't boost up a, a Dynamax boosted Protect Max Guard, so it won't work. So Rio is probably not going to see that much play in the next game. Uh, but Lucario definitely will in all the formats. Very, very aggressive. Very, very good mom. Didn't know Lucario, Toxro, and Garchomp were Gen 2 champion. Has them in Heart Gold. I mean, Heart Gold's a Gen 4 game, so it's a it's a remake. Not sure what Trixie will, will have its sleeve when Trick Room Shenanigans. Any. I don't think it's going to see play. I really don't, but you never know. Prankster's a really good ability. Anything that gets it's going to be good. Um, just getting in, did they release the decks for Scarlet and Violet? It's not the decks for Scarlet and Violet, right? This is not like a dead amount and leaked thing. Um, but it, what this is, is like a list of all the Pokemon that have already been confirmed through the use of like official trailers and on the Pokemon website. So yeah, it's not it's not like the it's not like the Dex leak. Thought it was uh, Gen two put together, still being big Gen two. Well, that, but Heart Gold Soul Silver is a Gen four game, so it's because it's remade in that format. Anyway, so Paladon. So we were talking a little bit about Titar and how Titar is going to be amazing. You're going to see Titar everywhere. Uh, it's so amazing in doubles. Hip Paladon is amazing in singles in Battle Stadium singles. There are a bunch of different formats you can play. You can play VGC doubles. You can play. Um, 6v6 Mog on singles. You can play Battle Stadium singles. Just because they're both singles, they're very different. One is 6v6, one is 3v3. Hippowdon is good in both of them. Versus like Glalie is only good in Battle Stadium singles because they have different rules and stuff like that. Hippowdon's really good though. It's probably one of the best hazard setters ever created in singles. Uh, and that's be. Remember what we were talking about Domfan? I know Domfan gets Stealth Rocks and that's really cool. Well, Domfan doesn't get a recovery move. If Powdown gets recovery moves, it gets Slack Off, it gets Yawn, it gets a bunch of really, really cool, annoying mechanics to deal with. And uh, it's it's not good in doubles, though, because one Intimidate ruins it. Like, when you see Hippo in doubles, what you do is you just ignore the Hippo all game and just kid its teammates over and over again. Because Hippo doesn't really have... It's a 112, but if one Intimidate or Reflect, and it's just useless all game. It's completely useless, in my opinion. Yeah, Stealth Rock, Standstorm, Roar, Yawn. Hippo gets it all. For singles it also gets like ice fang if you want to be able to hit like other like flying types and stuff like that if you have to it gets fisher if you want to be cheeky in battle stadium singles it gets crunch it gets sand tomb i like the sand tomb whirlwind's better than roar because it's not sound based um and it's just a good mon it's just a good overall mon i like hippo a lot and you're gonna expect to see when i play battle stadium singles my first team's probably gonna be built around hippo um it doesn't get the sandstorm boost to its respective spadef slot because it's a ground type and the sandstorm boost only boosts, boosts rock types but it's still a really good mod. It's good for breaking sashes, and it's very annoying and hard to get Hippo off the board. And even taking like super effective damage. If you were to get hit with like an Ice Beam, it might not die because there's a 108 with a 7. That's a huge stat line. That's crazy. Uh, especially like uh, like a Power Whip probably won't kill this thing because it has a huge defense stat with a massive base HP. So really, really good mod. I would highly recommend people using this guy in singles. In doubles, you're probably better off using Titar, but in singles, Hippo Out is really good. How much more do we have left? I just want to see. We can maybe finish this today. We can maybe finish this today. Maybe. I don't think there's enough to do like a part three. I think we should just try and finish it today. Let's go Toxicroak here. Toxicroak's good in both singles and doubles, but it gets harder and harder to use Toxicroak in singles. Because um, back then in singles, it used to be really good when weather was permanent and rain teams. When, whenever rain teams are really popular, pre Pelipper, Toxicroak was good because it walled Politoed, it walled like all the other things like that that use water moves with dry skin, being able to restore health damage every single turn and also absorb water attacks if it gets hit with them. So dry skin was really, really good for that in singles, but then they took away weather lasting forever and it was harder. And then they introduced Pelipper with Drizzle and Pelipper can just hurricane this guy in like one shot. So it's hard to use Toxicroak in singles, but in doubles, it's a great mod. It gets fake out, it gets counter. It's a good stat line. Um, poison fighting is nice. I know people are talking about Sneasler, maybe like... Um, Sneasler basically like invalidates this thing people say uh i didn't talk about anything from let's go i don't think i did but yeah it's a good pokemon it gets really really unique moves that not a lot of other things get right so it gets taunt which is kind of unique for not a lot of fighting types get taunt believe it or not you'd be surprised um but then it's egg moves right it gets things like bullet punch acupressure is fun it gets sash counter fake out faint quick guard vacuum wave these are all very unique moves that not a lot of things get I still think things like Breloom are going to be better than Toxicroak, but I do think that, like, it gets fling. There's a bunch of cool things you can do with Toxicroak, and introducing it into a team really makes your opponent have to think about, like, huh, 
do I bring my like Gyarados to this matchup? Because Gyarados really does not like fighting Toxic Croak because it's probably gonna have a really hard time hitting this thing. It takes, yes, super effective damage from like ground attack so Gyarados can like earthquake it, but like you can't, you can always switch in on those waterfalls. It restores health to recap off its sash. It gets drain punch over things like close combat. So it's a bulky mon. I would say if you're looking for like a more aggressive Hariyama, this is a good way to do it. And uh, yeah, it has Sucker Punch too. Very, very good stuff. So I like Toxic Croak. It's better when Kyogre's in the format because Kyogre really struggles with Toxic Croak. But um, yeah, decent Pokemon overall. Definitely a decent Pokemon. A Pokemon that I mean, we were talking about Pokemon that are slept on. And the thing we talked about the other day was everyone's like, Ursaring slept on. You know what's actually slept on is Luminion. Luminion is really slept on because it gets one of the best abilities in the game. It gets Storm Drain and Swift Swim. You have to respect both at the same time because it has a good enough stat line to use both of them. But um, yeah, it gets Storm Drain, just like Gastrodon. It's like literally a Gastrodon. Um, it's not nearly bulky, but one cool thing that Luminion gets that Gastron doesn't get is it learns Tailwind and Soak by level up. These are very unique moves that you don't see just on every Pokemon. Especially, you don't see Tailwind on things that aren't flying. You just don't see it. So sometimes when you're thinking like, oh man, I want a Tailwind Setter, but like I can't add another Rock Weakness to my team because all the Tailwind Setters are um, uh, flying type. That's where this Pokemon might be able to come in and be good. Um... Yeah, and also, like I said, it gets Storm Drain really, really unique. Uh, Soak is also really good, being able to pair it with the right things, to be able to turn things into water types, to punish with other stuff. That could be really, really cool. It also can, like, U-turn away safely. You can go for, like, Scarf Tailwinds with, like, U-turn Tailwind Soak and, like, Scald or something like that. This is a cool set. This Pokemon gets a lot of really fun stuff. And people sleep on this thing, but it is a good Mon that will see play. It will. This will see play, I can guarantee it. And Storm Drain is just that good of an ability. You can make a team that's super freaking weak to water. Just throw this in the team preview and disincentivize those water types because this Pokemon is good enough. It's just so fragile. It, yeah, it is. It is. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Like, if water types ever get out of control, this Pokemon will be there to take care of them. And uh, that's pretty much it. It gets Defog, too. That's unique. You don't... Like, that. That's sick. That's sick that it gets a Defog. So yeah, this Pokemon's good. In singles, it gets Defog. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Obama Snow. We've talked about Torkoal, Hippowdon, Tyranitar, Pelipper. This is the Ice Setter. It gets Snow Warning, which is what you use it for. I like Obama Snow. It used to be a lot better back in the day. Um, but I think Obama Snow is still really good. I think Obama Snow is still a good Pokemon. Um, it gets a 92 attack and special attack. So it can be a little physical or special. It gets enough physical moves to make it worth it um but special it gets goes go, go for those 100 accuracy blizzards for vgc yeah I, I like obama snow um you could scarf it you can sash it it's sometimes built in trick room back in the day it was definitely a, a good trick room sweeper because it has that big double hitting blizzard um but yeah hail's not as strong as the other weathers for the most part because it's all on obama snow when Alola Ninetales was in the, in the games, Alola Ninetales is a much better setter just because it has enough speed to be able to pin dragons. Obama Snow kind of like comes in and like if it's Obama Snow versus Salamence, Salamence is just going to flamethrower the Obama Snow because it has a four times weakness to fire. So maybe Obama Snow being able to Terra to change something and not get O code might change something, but like I have no idea. Yeah, Aurora Veil vale is cool. Um, that's one of the unique things of like the new Hail setters is they get Aurora Veil, vale, which basically puts up a dual screen, um, which is good. But uh, I don't think that it's, like, great. I don't think that it's a great mon. Um, it's just kind of hard to use. But if you're looking for any hail users, this is probably the best that you're going to get. Unless, like, they put Aurora's in the game that I didn't see. Let's go to Weavile. Weavile is amazing in both singles and doubles. Absolutely amazing. Pressure is a good ability, believe it or not. Pickpocket's a pretty good ability, too. But the reason Weavile's amazing is... Look at that stat line. 125 speed premium. Probably the... I think it might be the fastest, like, usable fake out mon. And um, 120 attacks that, no no slouch. It's good with Sash. Sash is what a lot of people use this guy with. In doubles, you sometimes see Life Orb sets. Same thing for singles, you sometimes see Life Orb sets. Actually, in singles, sometimes, if Choice Scarf mons aren't as prevalent, you see a lot of banded Weavile, and they just come in and tear things up. I love Sash Weavile with Swords Dance in both formats. But one really cool thing about Weavile is it gets beat up. This is probably one of the better justified enablers um it gets the big ice shard it gets things like taunt obviously um but yeah it gets like counter it gets faint faint fake out there was a time in 2015 where like weavile was like super meta because you just paired it with like huge aoe scarf mons that had like big aoe moves and you just go fake out a mixture of fake out faint 
with like ice shard and like a throat chop or like a brick break or something and you just had perfect coverage for what the meta was at the time and so Weavile always has the potential to come up and be like a completely good anti-meta Pokemon. You can think of it like a Persian that like actually deals a good a, a good amount of damage but is more of like a glass cannon so I think Weavile will see a lot of play um, especially near the start of the four mounts. Another good thing about being a dark type is you're not able to be affected by prankster moves so if like prankster thunder wave is a really big part of this format for some reason sometimes it is sometimes it's not weavile's not affected by that sort of stuff so weavile very very good mod yeah weavile was really hard to use in dynamax but if you take that off the table weavile still maintains the same ko potential it has on a lot of other mods and faint break white guard and quick guard faint always broke white guard didn't it i don't know if it always broke quick guard but i know it always broke wide guard so that's good so Magnazone up next. We were talking a little bit about Magneton in part one. Magnazone is built a little bit different. Sometimes it's still built sturdy. Sometimes it's built analytic. Magnet Pull is the thing you usually use this guy for. Huge base special attack stat. Slow enough to be used in Trick Room, but also fast enough to be like a bully if you need it to have like heavy uh, speed investment, maybe even usable with a Scarf. Weavile's evolution isn't in the game. It's not a Weavile evolution. You're talking about Sneasler, right? It will probably be in the game. That's a that's a different Sneasel evolution. So you can't use like we you can't use like Eviolite Weavile. Um, but anyways, yeah, Magnezone's great. Um, this Pokemon sees a lot of play, and again, it's Electric Steel type, so you can like Terra into like flying or some shit, and like really change how you take damage on this thing. And it's gonna this thing will see play. I really think Magnezone will see a lot of play. It's a very popular Pokemon as well. A lot of people really resonate with this thing's playstyle. Being able to come in, soak damage in singles, Volt Switch out, do whatever you want, pin Steel types, take out those Steel types. It's a good mod. And uh, yeah, I really think Magnezone will see a decent amount of play. In doubles, it's one of those mods that's just kind of hard to deal with. And it's great to bring out after you already have your speed control set up, whether that be Trick Room or Tailwind, like I was just talking about. It can kind of play the field on both ends. Sturdy is a good ability. Magnapul is good. Um, one little thing you can always do Here's a tip. If you're playing against Magnezones, right, and you're playing BGC, um, and you want to know if they have Magnet Pull, what you can do is when you start like a game, or, or you know when order you're going to send your Mons out in, always put your Steel Mons on your left. Always send those out first, because what you can do is you can try and switch them out. Um, and if it, if it lets you switch them out and goes to your next Pokemon to select that Pokemon's move, um, that means they don't have Magnet Pull. If it says that you can't switch out, that means they have Magnet Pull. So you can always scout for Magnet Pull, and it's not even about scouting to see like okay they have magnet pull it's about knowing if they have sturdy a lot of the time so you can actually use it to scout for sturdy which is pretty important in my opinion right i, I actually really really like yeah magnezone can actually um have access to fire moves again because it, it can fire terror with terror blast right that's sick it's good anyways so yeah that's a little tip little tip for how to use magnezone in doubles Ah. Uh take a sip of my coffee that's a coffee yeah that's it's a it's a clean one right that's a, that's a, that's the sort of stuff the uh the professional pokemon players don't want you to know unless like yeah you already know it <laughs> but yeah i've i've gotten like i there was one time where i actually did that to somebody and um i made a play that looked like terrible that like basically i super punished a sturdy in a situation where like they made it look their very best like it was magnet and they're like you like, how'd you know I was 30? And I had told them after the game and they're like, that's so dumb. I didn't even know you could do that. And it's like, <laughs> they were super salty about it. I was at a regional too. Anyways, um, let's take a look at some of these Pokemon. We're going to round out the end of Gen 4 here. Round out the end of Gen 4. So Leafeon, this is my favorite Eeveeolution. And there's one really, really cool thing that Leafeon can do to be meta. Meta Pokemon here meta pokemon but only in an anti-meta way leafeon gets chlorophyll as its hidden ability which is really really good and you may be thinking like leafeon torkoal sounds terrible and you're right it does you do not put leafeon on sun teams you use leafeon on your rain teams i've done this a bunch in 2017 and it's really really good first of all what are water types weak against grass attacks electric attacks Leafeon is a good pivot for those things, right? What do gra what do water mons like struggle dealing with? Like grass mons that can use spore and rage powder, those things. Leafeon's not affected by that. Leafeon, good mon so far. Thank you for the follow. So what you do with Leafeon is, as a 95 base speed, which means it's faster than basically everything if you get the core fill up, is you just throw it on your rain team, and then when they lead with their Lily Cole, and they lead with their sun, 
You weed with a Leafeon, you're faster than their Liligant, which is, I think Liligant's a 90, Leafeon's a 95. And you just straight up go for a rain dance and you set the weather and take away their sun on the first turn, enable your teammate and just KO everything, right? So Leafeon, uh, I built this thing with a really, really cool set that was like a scope lens set, boosted off like Leaf Blade. And then I had like rain dance. Um, and then I had like Yawn. And so it was all support moves. It was like all support moves with like Leaf Blade and Rain Dance. I think I had Roar on it back then too. So basically you just use this to like solve your Sun matchup. And it's really, really unique. And not a lot of people see it coming. There's a lot of videos on my channel of me doing this. And it was like, I was playing at like top 10 ladder um, in 20, that must've been 2017. And that's like hard to do like that's that's different than how you do ladder now because back then the ladder didn't make you play against other people that were like your same skill level you played to like fucking randoms and shit and it was fucking weird but like i was in like the 18 or 1900s which is huge um with that weefy on tech and it was just fucking it was easy people did not see that shit coming when i when i first started doing it and you guys can do the same thing it'll still work people that's well, that's one of those forgotten techs that's lost to the ages they just don't see it coming um and it's really good. It gets things like Roar. It gets things like Yawn. Uh, it gets things like Helping Hand. It gets a lot of really good support moves. Basically, it gets all the other usefulness that the rest of the Evolution line gets in like its egg department. So you can still go for like Baby Doll Eyes and Charms and all those things if you want. So it's a good mon. Um, and people just sleep on it. And the fact that it had like scope lines too on, a, on Leaf Blade means like I could ignore Intimidate. It was it was so cool. It's always been my favorite Evolution too. And it was really, really cool to like have it play a pivotal part in a team doing well. Um, Glaceon. Glaceon's not great. Um, it has a good special attack stat. Remember, all the evolutions have a base 130 in stat, and Glaceon's is in uh, special attack. It's a little bit slow, but it's actually just fast enough to where if you're a choice scarf it, it outspeeds most the base 100s in the game. So that's good. And also think about what most of the base 100s are, things like Salvament, Straptor. They're weak against Glaceon. So you can actually abuse that, Blizzard them, Ice Beam them, do a bunch of stuff. It gets Freeze Dry. That's what's good about Glaceon. It can hit those water types with Freeze Dry, very, very good move. I'm so happy they ha they gave it this move. Being able to hit water types for super effective damage, really, really good. Um, and it's not terrible, but I do think that it's more of like a niche pick. There's not really a reason to use like something like a Glaceon in a lot of those situations over like a Sylveon. I think Sylveon is just going to be a better overall Mon. So yeah, I love all evolutions except Floreon. I like Floreon too, but like I'd rather just use like a Darmanitan or something if it was an option, which it's not in this game. But yeah, Glaceon's usable. It's cool on hail teams. It's what I like doing with Glaceon is you bring it out and then like against like a Staraptor and they're like, cool, I can close combat this. And like your scarf, you just one shot them with an ice beam or a freeze dry. It's kind of cool. It's cheeky, but it's probably the best way the Pokemon's ever going to see play. Glade. Glade will actually always be okay. Similar to Gardevoir, Glade's really, really cool. Justified is what people use this guy for a lot because you can switch it in on dark attacks, get a plus one, but sorry, but also you can get beat up procs to hit this guy and give uh, four hits into uh you hit your teammate four times and give it a plus four attack and you just sweep it's hard to make it work because it's not that fast but it's still definitely doable um in singles usually people just scarf this thing back in the day me and my friends invented a set for singles that was like sub bulk up shadow sneak drain punch and that's actually still meta for Gallade, even till today kind of it's, st it's still just like a really really cool set because it's very very bulky and it has the coverage that you need but in reality, that's a good stat line. What's really cool about Gallade is that it gets wide guard. Um, I think that's probably one of the better things about Gallade is that it gets wide guard, it gets helping hand, it gets faint, um, it gets quick guard too, it gets close combat, it gets some of really unique moves. So you have to respect all of those things, which is a lot of stuff to respect, while also still respecting like a choice scarf Gallade coming in hot with like psycho cuts and close combats. And then if you do everything, respect everything correctly on Gallade, especially like hypnosis and prison trick rooms, all those different things, um, you can still get hit with like an ally switch, a choice craft destiny bond, a knockoff, a uh, shadow sneak, do whatever. And then af after respecting all those things, it can still trick room your ass, right? And it also gets like will o wisp Like it just gets so good coverage. Um, it gets thunder wave. It gets just so many cool things. And you have to respect all that stuff and trick room at the same time, which is really, really hard. And you don't want to fake out a Gallade either because it can get steadfast. And if you fake out it, it doesn't need to set up any speed control because it's just going to be faster up to the plus one. So Glade's one of those mons that can do a lot of stuff. If you know exactly what its moveset is going to be in like game two, game three, in like a VGC set, it's pretty easy to deal with. But in a best of one, Gallade's a lot of fun. And we use Gallade a lot. Whenever whenever the meta gets like really figured out, Gallade can come in and like fit a really, really niche role and be a really, really good part of like any team. I'm probably going to use a little bit of Gallade in series 14 
right before Scarlet Violet come out. I, it always does well in videos too. So Glade's really cool. A lot of people like Glade. Mega Glade was a lot of fun to use back in, um, you know, X and Y and stuff like that too. So, uh, or sorry, was that a, was that a Oros Mon? It was an Oros Mon, but yeah. No, it was an X and Y too, wasn't it? I don't remember. Either way, Glade's good and it's going to see a decent amount of play. Frostlass. Frostlass is only really good in singles. You don't really see it in doubles all that much. I think the best thing that Frostlass brings to the table is it gets like a, it's like a Gengar, right? It's an ice Gengar. It's a base 110 speed Ghostmon. A little bit weaker, but it has ice coverage. So if you need, if dragons are a real big problem, think about using a Frostlass. Um, and then one cool thing that Frostlass can do is it earns Frost Breath, which is a 60 base power special attack that automatically crits. I think Glaceon gets it too, but this is fast enough to make it work. And you can pair this with like Anger Point Mons to go for a 100% guaranteed plus six Anger Point self proc. And that's probably one of the best things Frostlass can really do. Other than that, you can pair Frostlass on teams with like Obama Snow and other hail, hail Setters and go for a fast Aurora Veil. Like, if I were to go Frostlass or Obama Snow, a lot of people would think that the Obama Snow is going to set the Aurora Veil or Blizzard. You can go Protect Obama Snow, hard switch it out, and Aurora Veil with a very, very fast Frostlass, and people just don't usually see that coming. It's good in a best of one. But other than that, it's kind of just okay. It's kind of just okay. I like it a lot more in singles, uh, just because it's a 110 base speed mon that gets like Destiny Bond, gets Curse Body. Um, it's a, it's a cool mod. It's basically an ice type Gengar that's a little bit weaker. So it's, it's cool. Get it? Cause it's nice type, but it's not going to be like meta defining or anything like that. Pokemon that will be meta defining both singles and doubles is going to be Rotom. It's gonna be Rotom. This thing gets so many different forms. This is the base Rotom form. And even this Rotom form is usable, but Rotom gets a lot of different forms. Why well, won't let me see all of them? Do I have to like go click it up at the top? Yeah, there's like all the different Rotom forms. So like Heat Rotom, Wash Rotom, Frost Rotom, Fan, and Rotom Mo. They're all good. All of them have their usefulness. Even the Fan one has like top cut events before. But they get really, really good stat lines. They're super bulky. This is one of those Pokemon that like even though it has a low base HP, you can fully invest in HP and then you can invest a lot more in each specific perspective defense, have a good enough speed stat to make it work. And then remember, it has Levitate. So you can like Terra Change, keep that Levitate. Really, really good mod. I think Rotom just is such a good mon. Um, it gets really good coverage, it gets will o -Wisp, it gets Volt Switch, Electric Attacks, and Nasty Plot as of recent gens. Rotom's everywhere. Um, what a lot of people like to do is they like to build like a three or four mon core, and then once they realize they have like a problem to a specific type, you add a Rotom at that point to your team in both singles and doubles, and the Rotom helps cover up for that one weakness you might have. Like, oh man, like this team's really, really good, but I got like a little bit, I have two mons weak to water. Throw Rotom Wash on the team. Right? Or a Rotom Grass, uh, if you really want to repin those Grass types. Or like, oh man, this team's like really, really cool, uh, but I have, I have two Steel types. So like, I have like a big Ground and Fire weakness. Throw a Rotom Heat in there. Or a Rotom Wash, you know? There's so many things. What do you think about Terra? Is it going to be insane? It's not. It's, it's not going to be as insane as we... Alright, so we talked about it, right? Think of Terra as... Think of it similar to Dynamax. Because you're thinking about Terra's going to be so crazy, like, they're going to change their type and I'm not going to be able to KO it and it's going to be ridiculous. But, like, what's really going to happen is, like, people aren't going to be using Terra defensively. People are going to be using Terra to gain a type to maintain a one-hit KO on something or double Terra into a type they already have to get a KO they wouldn't normally have. People are going to be blowing things up with Terra. It's then already active and there's the cat's out of the bag. So if you play defensively, use redirections, use speed control, use um, fake out. Fake out can stop the Terramon. So it's not nearly as broken as Dynamax. Dynamax is stupid. Dynamax doubles your HP, you're immune to all the, the status and other other things like that, like encores, disables, fake outs, flinches. Like Terra is so much more manageable. Think about how many, like if your opponent wants to go Herp Derp and Terra on turn one and they get fake out and they've revealed their Terra, they lose. That's game over, probably. Because then you haven't revealed Terra yet and you can punish them, right? So I don't think it's going to be insane. Do you think you'll be able to use choice effects with her? Oh, most definitely. There'd be no reason why you wouldn't. Because it's not like that broken, right? It's in, it's max moves are like 130 to 150 base moves. They're like Z moves that you're using, right? And you couldn't use Z moves with choice items either because it took your move it took your item to use it right you can roar a terramon too yeah like you can deal with terramon so much so so easy um the reason why dynamax was busted is because it lets you blow stuff up and not ever get punished right but anyways um 
the reason you'll be able to use choice effects with it is because you're you're not using base 150 moves. You're using like an 80 base power move. You know? You can and if you're home for like an AoE Terra move, it can get wide guarded. It, you can get fake outed, you can get redirected, you can get quashed, you can be affected by speed control, flinch, what have you. It's not gonna be nearly as broken as people think it is. It's gonna be a good mechanic, but probably it's gonna be a good mechanic, not like a shit one. Uh, like Dynamax was. But Rotom's gonna be everywhere. Singles, doubles, Rotom's everywhere. If you're looking for just a mon to put on your team to know that you're doing something right, pick a Rotom form. In singles, most people like to pick the Wash one. I think the Wash one is obviously the most popular. It's a water type. Water types are good. Water types with like not as many weaknesses because you know you're pairing with an electric levitate is really good. Um, also being able to cover other water types because you're an electro type, good. I think my favorite Rotom is probably the Heat one because I found that like the Heat one has really, really good defensive typing of fire. They're, your only weakness is water and rock, which is really, really nice. And then like Overheat lets you pin other grass types, which are usually very, very hard to deal with. Grass types are generally bulky. You can break those with the fire one. Also, everyone uses the water one, which means, yes, there's a bunch of water ones around, but in reality, a lot of people are using grass types to stop the water one. So the grass types that people are using to stop the water one, you defeat with your fire one. So it's like a, it's a triangle. I like using the fire one. Picks base Rotom. What mouth? All right. So yeah, we were talking about anger point mons. Uh, we'll get to that guy in a sec. Uh, we're going to talk a little again first. Um, but Crookedog gets anger point. That's what you can pair with Frost Lass. Lilligant is the number one partner for Torkoal. I don't know anything about this thing. We're not even going to talk about it. Um, but Willy Gant gets core filled, doubles its speed in the sun. So you pair this with Torkoal, 90 base speed. This is going to double, right? So this is going to be faster than literally anything, even other Choice Scarf mons and things like that. And what you do with Willy Gant is you can you go for Sleep Powders, which are hard to deal with. 75% uh, accuracy, you can use in the Wide Lens if you want. Um, but most people like to go with, where is it? It still has it, right? After you. So after you lets you, but you, whatever you use after you on functions at the same speed tier as Lilligant. So if you pair Lilligant with Torkoal, you can go after you into your Torkoal and they go for like base 180 speed eruptions boosted by choice specs and the sun and get a double KO on the first turn. So respecting that, respecting also you can just switch out the Torkoal and Sleep Powder something, respecting so many different options, it just creates a bunch of little 50-50s using Lilligant and Torkoal, right? If they even want to lead with it if it's even in their team. So it's a really, really good core. Also, if they KO the Torkoal, you can after you your teammates. Right? So let's say I go after you Torkoal, get one KO, but one thing out of Sash, they take up my Torkoal next turn, I just send out like a Hariyama, I after you into my Hariyama and just start keeping sweeping, you know? So it's a really, really good mon for, I think people that want to understand VGC, like there's gonna be rentals that all these content creators make. There will be Lily Cole rentals for people to use. And it's gonna be a team that lets you play against people that I would say are a little bit more experienced, a little bit better, let you take wins above your experience level and help you kind of understand a little bit more about speed tiers. Lilligant and Torkoal are a lot of fun to use as well. So it's a it's a cool core. Lilligant's going to be everywhere. In singles, it's not nearly as good as it is in doubles. But um, in doubles, it's a very, very good Pokemon. Very, very good Pokemon. Let's go. Kukudile. So it gets Intimidate. Very, very good. Get Moxie. You don't really see Moxie that much outside of singles. Anger Point, we were talking about the only way to really activate that is through the use of like Frost Breath from like a Glaceon or a Frost Last, which you don't want to do that because it like Okos you. Do you lose Terra if you switch out your Pokemon? You do not lose the Terra if you switch out your Pokemon. So um, just know that it'll, it'll come back, I think. I think, right? Correct? I, I remember seeing something. If I switch it on, it's still active. I remember seeing that. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Don't don't listen to me. Um, but yeah, uh, Intimidate's good. This thing is basically a really, really good mon. It's a dark type, dual stab, ground. Good stuff. Um, 92 base speed is good. It's faster than all that other stuff. So this thing's similar to like Landorus. And this is going to be probably the go-to Intimidate user that a lot of people use after Arcanine develops itself. You, you might lose it. You might lose a Terra. I don't think though. I don't think you lose it though. I think it stays. I think that it stays. But if it, if it's, if it switches, like you don't lose your Mega when you switch, you know? So I'd assume that it's the same. But anyways, um... Yeah, Crook really, really good. Um, it checks Arcanine a bit. It doesn't outspeed the Arcanine, but it has super effective moves against the Arcanine. So, and then Arcanine is going to have to be EV trained to outspeed Crookedile so they can will o wisp it. And that creates a whole another form of like a triangle. And then like Rotom checks both of them, you know, Rotom Wash checks both of them. So it's, it's a good mod. This thing gets a lot of really cool moves. It, it's good with Scarf. It's good without Scarf. It's good with Lum. It's good with Citrus. It's good with so many different abilities. Uh, it gets a lot of really unique moves too. Like Spite is a weird move. 
Um, I don't know if like, scale shots can be in the game, but that's also kind of cool. Gets rock slide, gets EQ, um, fling, all the different sort of other weird stuff. It gets snarl. It's a good mon. You're going to see a good amount of crocodile. Very, very like underrated mon. This Pokemon usually actually does well the first regional or two, just because people aren't really ready for like an aggressive intimidator that is bulky enough. And like Crocodile's very, very good. I think I might use a decent amount of Crocodile. I've never really been a Crocodile stan. I usually like Gyarados more. But like, I think this might be a good gem for Crocodile, I think. So think about using it. Let's see. We're almost there, chat. Chat, we're almost there. We're gonna we're gonna finish. We're gonna finish. Um, or are we? We can finish gen five and then do seven, eight, and finishing thoughts. I think we could finish gen 5 right because we're already in the middle of gen 5 there's so much gen 5 left so much gen 5 all right let's do zork let's do zork so zork is a the thing is like the rest of these mons have so much more to talk about than things like camera up right zork is amazing um have i got to play since pre-patch launch i did i did play a while since pre-patch launch i streamed yesterday um yeah i like gen 5 a lot i don't know that much about this zork uh, i didn't really do that much Arceus stuff but Base Zork is really good. Illusion copies the last mon in your party. There's a bunch of unique stuff you can do with Illusion. I have probably 10 or 15 videos on my channel explaining like unique Zork mechanics that most people like wouldn't know. Um, how to scout Zoroks on the other team, how to use Zork, how to use Zork against Zorark, bunch of little stuff like that. Um, Zork is a very unique Pokemon that takes a long time to learn. One of the things I actually said in my video that was like top five tips for people that are gonna learn VGC or learn singles or learn Pokemon for Scarlet and Violet is like familiarize yourself with these sort of mechanics like Zorark over here because it's these sort of things that are gonna be valuable going into the next game that you can actually still carry over. Case in point, like you cannot Zorark, um, you cannot ditto copy an opposing Zorark because it's something that's already disguised. Stuff like that. Um, it's it's weird. It does not get the stats. It just looks like the Mon. So it's that's another thing. Like Zorark's one of those Mons that it's kind of hard to play with if you're not familiar with it. So I would definitely recommend trying it. It gets a good speed stat. It gets a good special attack stat and a good attack stat. It gets like counter, swords dance, U-turn. It can be physical or special. It gets flamethrower, night days, focus blast, all the good stuff. Zork is amazing. I would highly recommend trying out Zork if you've never tried it. Very, 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 very good Pokemon. And if the normal ghost one's different, that's a different type of Zork, right? Like, it's so different. It completely changes. Like, it puts the Pokemon on its head, and you have to respect both forms of Zorark. Because, like, what I like doing is pairing Zorark with, like, disguising my Zorark as a Gengar, right? What are Gengar's weaknesses? Sorry, what are, what are Zorark's weaknesses? Fighting and bug? Fairy? What are Gengar's resistances? Fighting, bug, and fairy? Makes sense. I love disguising it as Mimikyu, right? You have to you have to hit the Mimikyu, but you can't hit it with the things that actually do damage to Zorark, right? Or you can pair, you can disguise Zorark as, like, a Heracross, right? So something that has like that big psychic weakness, so they have to psychic it, and then it's a dark type, it doesn't affect it. There's so many different things about Zork that are hard to know, but they take a lot of time to learn correctly. And Zork's just a really, really cool mom that I would highly recommend. I don't have, I do not have all day to go down and break down like how to use Zork in every single situation, but it's a really, really cool mom. And uh, also the fact that it gets like copycat can be kind of fun in doubles, because it can copycat other moves that, like your teammates use and function outside of what like your speed control looks like. So let's say for example, I would lead with, um, let's just throw something out there. Let's see, let's throw out, I know it's not in the game. I know it's not in the game. Kyogre, Choice Scarf Kyogre. Choice Scarf Kyogre and Hariyama, right? I can go for Spout and Fake Out. But in reality, this Hariyama isn't our Hariyama, it's a Zorak. So it's forcing them to respect Fake Out. But it might have copycat too. So you can go Specs Water Spout. Not Specs. Scarf Water Spout. That functions before Zork. Zork uses copycat, uses your same water spout, you get double water spout. Right? All while also having the illusion of fake out, also have the illusion of the wide guard from the Hariyama. And so they're respecting they're respecting something that's a slower base speed. And so Zork functions outside of those Pokemon speed tier. And there's a bunch of other really cool things, uh, especially if like the Terra mechanic is something you keep when you switch. There's a few other situations where I made a short recently talking about a Zorark outplay that I did where I got my opponent to think Zorark was something completely different and made it look like my Mega Gengar and changed the effectiveness of the game. And like Zorark, Zorark can do so many different things. It it literally is a Pokemon that can break the game um, and give make the impossible possible. So I would highly recommend learning some Zorark tech. My channel has a ton of that sort of stuff. You can just type that's plus one Zorark into YouTube and it'll get like 30 videos come up. Very, very cool Pokemon. Let's look at Saucebuck. I don't think this thing's in a C play. 
It usually doesn't. I don't think this Pokemon usually sees play. Um, it gets Core Fill, which is cool. Sap Sipper is great. Serene Gray is good ability. It's just that like this stat line is kind of just all right. It's kind of just okay. I don't I don't see myself using this thing for like. I guess it gets that um Grass Flame Charge Trailblazer. It's a new move, but and it gets like Mega Horn and Horn Leech, and that's like it. You know. I don't know. I just don't see myself really using this thing. I think it's just a... This was a Pokemon that was not even used in, like, the gen that it came out in very much. Like, I, this Pokemon wasn't even good back then. Uh, I don't see, like, a reason to use this Pokemon over, like, a Pokemon with better speed control. Serene Grace Headbutt? Yeah, it does... You're right. You're right. It, it, it should get Headbutt. Um, and it stabs the Headbutt. But I just, And it also gets things like uh, Jump Kick, um, you know, the Mega Horn that we just saw. I just don't think it's going to be, like, valuable. I don't think it'll be valuable. Shami Chandra is good coverage, but, like, I just don't see, like, using that over, like, a good Intimidator or something like that. It's one of those mons that has a very selfish playstyle. I think the only set it might see is, like, a Choice Garf set with Headbutt for a 60% chance pair off Serene Grace. But that's about it. This is another underrated Pokemon. It is going to be Electros, right? Electros. Do any of the forms have advantage? I don't even remember. Like, that's the thing. Is like, I don't think Saucebuck ever, like, really saw play. But... Electros is a really good Pokemon. This Pokemon actually, like, I think this Pokemon was, like, one of the most used at the 2011 Worlds. It was all over 2012 and 2013, too. This Pokemon's, like, really, really good. It's an electric type with Levitate. It doesn't have weaknesses, right? And it actually, like, is pretty freaking good. It can be used in Trick Room. It's pretty bulky. It's really strong. It can be both physical or special. I love this Pokemon, right? Like, I love this Pokemon. I love Electros. It's one of my absolute favorites. It can do so many things. I've used Electros at a few VGC events before. It's good coverage. That's good coverage. This is unique, you know? So it can do a bunch of different stuff. I like it a lot. It still gets, like, Roar and uh, Toxic as a TM for the last game that it was in. But, like, yeah, I think Electros is one of those mons that's definitely usable. Because um, it can be both physical or special. It gets a bunch of unique damaging type move so it has very very good coverage with like decent enough stats to back it up and so i like this pokemon i'm probably going to use it it's a very safe pick a lot of the time you know like i was talking about people like to put rotoms on their team electros kind of fills that role to where if you need something to like get you through the mid game wait out speed control stuff like that electros is a very good pokemon for that so think about using this this is a better pokemon than people give it credit for 515 base stats are good right um did Stantler get talked about yesterday? Uh, it might have. I think we're saving Stantler, because Stantler's getting like new forms and stuff like that. So we're going to save that for a different discussion. We're going to talk about Bear Tick. Bear Tick. So it gets a few abilities. I always thought this thing was Ice Water, because it got it gets Slush Rush and, and Swift Swim and Snow Cloak. But I mean, I always thought it was like part Water type, but it's not. It has a good attack stat, but 50 is too slow. Basically, this thing, even with... Um, Slush Rush and Swift Swim, it's still slower than, like, regular Pokemon. Raichu still outspeeds this thing, for the most part. Like, um, Weavile still outspeeds this thing. So, it's not nearly as good as it looks. It's a cool Mon, but, like, it's, uh, just not that hot. And the fact that it, like, doesn't stab the water attacks that it gets means that, like, even if it does, is using, like, a water team, it's just not that great. Um, it only gets the boost from, like, the actual, like, rain attacks. Like, what does it get? It gets... What, what water attacks does this guy get? He has to get, like, something. He gets Liquidate. Um, but he didn't used to have that, right? So it's, like, it's not that great of a Pokemon. I didn't know how to EV train when Electros was around, and I'm excited I finally get a chance to use it right. Electros is actually one of those, like, Pokemon, though, that, like, if you, even if you didn't EV train, putting random stats on it because it's already so bulky is good. It's one of those mons that would just, like, random EVs would be okay. Yeah. Bear Tick's kind of just whatever. It was okay as a max mon for a small time in like sword and shield but that's about it cryonogle is good in singles in singles this is an okay pokemon levitate ice nice levitate it has a really good speed stat 105 outspeeds all those base 100s remember all those base 100s like salamence staraptor that all have that weakness to ice this is the pokemon that punishes them right cryonogle is actually not that bad it gets a bunch of really unique moves um fast haze fast icy wind gets that freeze dry like i was talking about um, gets things like Acid Armor, Recover if you want it. For singles, this is a really good mod because it gets Rapid Spin. So like Rapid Spin, Freeze Dry, Recover, all those sort of things like that. It's a very unique mon in a lot of those regards. It gets like Flash Cannon and stuff like that. So it's unique. I think it's better in singles than it is in doubles, but it is actually like a really, really cool Pokemon that will probably end up seeing play at some point. But only once the meta like stabilizes and like 
people really tunnel on Pokemon like, you know, Salamence, Hydreigon, or other, like, once you find teams that are really, really reliant on some of those Pokemon, this thing can outspeed those and pin them and actually have usefulness in other situations, you're going to see a decent amount of this Pokemon. But nothing like meta, you know, it's kind of just like, oh, I didn't know that was that fast, and then they was a mon to it. Hydreigon's going to see a lot of play. I think Hydreigon's one of the mons that's probably going to be better with the Terra mechanic because it has Levitate, right? So you can you can change your type to like Steel and just be completely broken. Um, it has a great special attack stat, good speed stat, not amazing. It's not 100. So like if Hydreigon ever becomes like super meta, Salamence will always outspeed it and always have the potential chance to check it. So Hydreigon's really, really good. What's cool about Hydreigon is it gets the big stab Dark Pulse and that's not a type that dragons can normally do stuff against. So like, for example, Salamence, I know Garchomp's not in the game, but like Dragonite, Flygon, all those guys, they're cool, but they can't stop Trick Room Setters. That's the thing about dragons. They can't stop Trick Room Setters because Trick Room Setters are like steel and, um, well, mostly psychic. They're usually psychic types. So Hydreigon is the dragon that comes in and says like, hey, Trick Room Setter, Life Orb, Dark Pulse, you gone. Or Specs, Dark Pulse, you gone. So that's the thing that Hydreigon brings to the table. It also gets beat up, so if you want to go beat up Justified, for VGC, but in singles, like, Hydreigon's great. And another thing about Hydreigon that was pretty cool is that it usually gets Earth Power somehow. Yeah, Belch Zorak in Gen 7 for fun. I ran Belch Hydreigon for fun. It was good. Um, it gets Snarl, Stab Snarl, Stab Breaking Swipe. Good mod. Um, gets Fire Coverage. It gets Taunt still, too, which not a lot of dragons get. So I think the Earth Power right there, um, it usually gets Earth Power just kind of somehow built into its kit, which means it can also, like, check steals. So Hydreigon's a really, really good mod. We're gonna see a lot of it, but, um... I still really do like Salamence more, just because I like the Intimidate that Salamence offers, but Hydreigon is very, very popular. You're going to see a lot in singles and doubles, and now, especially now that Dragapult's probably not going to be in the game, we're going to see a lot of Hydreigon come back. Even though Hydreigon's good against Dragapult, it's it's Dark type's good against Dragapult's Ghost, but Dragapult's Dragon beat Hydreigon's Dragon, so that's why you didn't see as much Hydreigon in this format as opposed to other formats, just because Dragapult's a good check to it. But it's a, it was a, still a very, very good mod. Also, Zwellius actually is kind of usable, not even as an Eevee Light mod. It gets Hustle, which gives it a 1.5 boost with its attack stat, at the cost of some of its health and so it has an 85 attack stat which means this thing if you put a choice band on it is stronger than freaking arceus stronger than metagross stronger than like darmani tans this thing hits so freaking hard outrage dragon rush head smash zwellius hits like a freaking truck in the lower tier of singles and even in bgc like you will die this thing will like oko your zashian with like a neutral attack <laughs> like fire fang from this thing would oko the crap out of zashian it's, and that's like a 65 base move, so it's ridiculous. This thing is, this, as well as it's really, really hard if it can actually get its hands on, get its chompers on something. So uh, definitely respect those. All right, so we're going to talk about Gen 6. We're so close, guys. We're so close. Should we just talk about Gen 6 next time? Doesn't hustle or accuracy? You just got to have faith. You just got to have faith. You know what? Actually, we'll talk about Gen 6 next time. We'll talk about Gen 6 next time. We'll save it. And we'll start things off with a bang with talent flame we'll talk about it next time i want to say thank you to everyone that actually stopped by for part two part three will be tomorrow we'll do part three tomorrow if you want to go watch part one that's up on youtube right now that is up on youtube right now you can see everything where i talk about all of the kanto pokemon uh in part one and the johto pokemon that's part one you can go check out all my talks about these pokemon that's up on youtube we just got done doing all these i'm gonna edit these put these up on youtube very very soon and uh, thank you to everyone who dropped subs. We got a lot of subs today. We got Seuss dropping the sub. We got Babero dropping the sub. We got Mushroom VGC dropping the sub. Nebula OG dropping the sub. Apple dropping the sub. We got a lot of subs today. So thank you guys for everyone that dropped the sub on Twitch. If anyone watching on YouTube wants to drop a sub, I would also appreciate it. It's completely free. We're trying our best to be consistent and do the sort of content that will help people grow in Scarlet and Violet. So if you have any ideas for stuff you want to see, let me know. And uh, the last thing, we're not playing WoW today. The last thing I'm going to say is... Um, Think about checking out my song. Think about checking out my song. The link to that is right here. Um, it's on Spotify. It's also on Bandcamp. It's on uh, SoundCloud, all the all the platforms. If you give that a listen, I would appreciate it. Just let me know what you think. I would really, really appreciate it. And uh, again, if you want to follow the band page, that'd be awesome. If you want to save it, those definitely help with the Spotify algorithm, which is very, very different from YouTube. So think about checking out my new song. Think about let me know what you think. And uh that's pretty much it, everybody. Thank you so much for stopping by, and uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Peace out, everybody.